Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the 302nd edition of the Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast. I'm your host, Steve Wellings, and joining me on the call, we have Andy Patterson, Ozzy Smith, and a glorious return. He's just jumped on the call. How are you sounding, Tommy, the guru, Alan? Hi, right, lads. How's it going? Uh, not too bad. You sound a bit croaky there, Tom. I just, kind of, I've kind of been sleeping there, mate. I'm going to work early in the morning, but I've decided to jump on for an hour. Yes. Good lad. Good lad, Tommy. Good lad. We'll get you on first. Um, yeah, packed evening. There's only one place to start, isn't there? We're not going to mess about tonight. Amazing performance on Tyson Fury last night, I thought, mm-hmm. against Deontay Wilder, given all the, the bits and pieces, the amount of time he was out for the ring and all that. I picked Wilder last week. I thought Fury would mess him about for the first few rounds. As it transpired, Fury, I thought, was winning a lot of the early rounds. But Deontay Wilder would eventually catch up with him. And when Fury went down in the ninth round, I thought, here we go, this is the end of it. And then Fury had a fantastic 10th round, came back. I don't see any way that that was a draw, to be honest with you. I mean, this guy, Alejandro Rochin, is it, coming in with a 115, 111? I don't know what the hell he was watching. Giving the first four rounds to Wilder. He got Floyd there in his hat, giving five rounds. The first five rounds, Tommy, would bring you in to to, uh, to Uh Fury. I just thought he put on a boxy masterclass. I mean, Wilder, for the first four rounds, or five rounds, Tommy, whatever it was, he just wasn't doing anything. How can you give him those rounds? What what on earth was going through this referee, this male version of Adelaide Bird? What the hell was going through his, his mind, Tommy, to give Wilder those rounds? I just cannot understand. The brown envelope went I, through his mind. I, I seen his card this morning. I genuinely thought when I first looked at it that he'd mixed the two fighters up. I said, how can he get, uh, you, you see them getting in the early rounds, I'm saying, that surely can't be right, he's not landed a punch in the early goings, eh? well, maybe, maybe in the second, he, he doesn't know a bit better in the second, I think I gave him the second round, but one day about, one day about seven, it was clearly Tyson Fury, I don't see how, how he can give him more than, more than one round more, at that point, mm. I, I don't know man, I, I, that's, that is, this year, there's been a lot of talk of robberies this year, and you know, unrightly so, but that is, a genuine, genuine robbery, man. They've absolutely robbed Tyson. His story was great when he came back. You know, obviously we all know it and that. And they've robbed them. They've, they've robbed them a, a great victory. It would have made them. It would have got him another belt. It would have mean he'd won every belt in the division. You know, he was the only old champion as well. Stuff like that. It's just. I said, Paulie Mar- I watched the Showtime version last night. Paulie Mar- and I just said it based. The, it's the judges are the, they're, they're not just they're not just affecting that fight. They're, they're they're affecting people's futures and the potential to make millions of dollars. It's affecting the fighters' families and that offer whatever they're getting in a brown envelope. And that it's, it's, it's just no right. It's disgusting. Regarding the fight, though, uh, you've, you've got to see anybody anybody that's that's being objective's got to see Tyson Fury dominate that fight for. Apart from two split seconds in that fight, he dominated the rest of it. Just nobody can see it in another way. It's just a fact. It's just the way it was. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. That he dominated that fight. It's, I wasn't even reading this morning after that. I was just... Uh, you're not used to seeing it in the sport and that these days. It's, it's, it's a fucking disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> You've just got to feel for the big man. Yeah, but it's great. Uh, on a positive note, it's great to see him back. And it's great to see... He's reaffirmed that he's still the best heavyweight in the world. When he left, it was the best heavyweight in the world. And he's back now and he's reaffirmed that uh, we, what most people believe is a comprehensive points victory over uh, one of the top three heavyweights in the world and Deontay Wilder. Uh, Tyson, he's, he, he went away. He was the most proven heavyweight after taking Vladimir's titles. He's come back. I'm not going to say schooled Deontay Wilder. I don't like saying that because he was doing twice in the fight. But... He's boxed his head off from there for the majority of the fight, as I say. He's apart from two two split settings, he's boxed he's boxed the head off him, and he deserves to be the WBC heavyweight champion. Disgraceful decision. Uh, great to see Tyson back. Um, I look forward to seeing him in the rematch. I think he'll be even sharper in the rematch. He'll win even better in a rematch. And I don't even want to see a rematch. Really, I, I said it this morning on Twitter as well. To be honest, I think he's beat him. I don't think there's any need to go back there. I think he should go straight to a Joshua fight. No, um, you've got to have a rematch, Tommy. You've got to have a rematch. Come on. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I, I, for me, he's beat him. I just, I, I'd rather, I, I'd rather just go and see him go straight to Joshua. Now, for me, that's the biggest fight that can be made in world boxing right now. Anti Joshua against Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, uh, Anti Joshua is at the absolute peak. He, his popularity. Tyson Fury is probably never going to be bigger. Most popular and is new for me. That is the most, the most perfect time to make that fight. It's going to be the biggest fight in boxing. It's the biggest fight in British boxing history. I 
I obviously to see the Dion Rowder rematch, maybe somewhere down the line, but for me right now, he's beat Wilder last night. He should go, go straight to Joshua. That fight should get done right now. It was a great fight last night, though. Just a shame with the decision. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it was the what, knockdowns, I think, that were even keeping it just, you know, the very semblance of close, in my opinion. I thought that for, uh, Fury was doing the job. I agree with Tommy. I thought Fury won the fight, but it was officially a draw. And they're going to have to have the rematch because, I mean, the, the AJ is going to fight somebody else next. We've had a we've had a, a comment in from Marvelous Mendo on the Facebook page. He said, Fury probably won it on points, doing just enough to win most of the rounds. But credit to Wilder. Credit to Wilder for delivering the two biggest rounds against an opponent that would frustrate and be a handful for anybody. Neither deserve to lose and both deserve the credit for a fascinating contest. I don't know what superpowers Tyson Fury possesses and how he got up in the last round. I agree with that, Mendo. Mendo continues, but a draw feels okay, he said, and boxing still wins as both deliver what they were supposed to. I hope they get the rematch on as I find them far more interesting than watching another hand-picked offering for Anthony Joshua. I wonder who cares about April now. Uh, yeah, Marvellous Mendo's put his opinion in there, Andy. Who cares about April now? We knew it wasn't going to be Wilder. We knew it definitely wasn't going to be Fury. It's going to be the winner of Dillian White against Derek Chisora and against AJ, isn't it? I mean, take up um, Marvellous Mendo's comments there for a start. He seemed pretty happy with the draw, Andy. What do you think? No, I'm fucking raging with that draw last night. That's absolutely fucking terrible. I mean, I should have known. I should have fucking known when it took forever to get those scorecards read out that there was something going to get cooked up. I looked at that judge, uh, the call again. Uh, Alejandro Rokin. I had a look at his. Mm -hmm. I had a look at his record. There is absolutely nothing on his record to suggest that he's a dodgy judge. But last night he decides to take the fucking first delve into shit in the bed, and he produces a one fifteen one eleven scorecard. Now I'm sorry. I've spoke to people today as well who have said that uh, oh, for a fighter who gets dropped twice, he's going to lose a fight. Fucking bollocks. I had Tyson Fury 7-0 up before he got dropped in, in uh, I was 8-0 up before he got fucking dropped in round 9. Mm -hmm. I even gave him the second round. Fury, I mean, I don't even think that Wilder even landed a combination, like a 1-2 combination until about the, until like maybe the 7th or 8th round. You know he was fucking poor, right? Andy, look at Hassan and Dam. He goes down four or five times in fights and they're still close. That, that thing about two knockdowns is bullshit. Yeah. You, it only makes it a 10-8 round. You don't get 10-6 rounds. David Lemieux fight, for example, you know, if he hadn't been knocked down in that fight, it's all if, buts and maybes. If he hadn't been knocked down against Lemieux yeah. four or five he's times, they won, that, well, they, won, yeah. Yeah, they won that fight clearly in the cards. Quillen as well. The, I want to try and focus on the positives before I get to the negatives. The, the, the positives are this. Tyson Fury, three years, three years out of the ring, dumps over 150 pounds, whatever it is, you know, 10 stone in weight to get back in the ring there. People were like, oh, he's going he's to gas. Um, he's he's not, he's not his prime anymore. He's, he's going to be slow and all that sort of stuff. Well, last night he stepped up to the fucking mark and he proved to the world that he has still got it. I mean, I, 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 I swear on my daughter's life, when he went down in that 12th round, my jaw hit the fucking desk and I was like myself, he's out, he's not getting up. I'm like, how the fuck can you go for winning a fight clearly, in my opinion, to get knocked out like that? And then it rose like a fucking phoenix rising through the ashes, man. It was like unbelievable how he got up. And fair fucks to Dante Wilder, by the way. He got outboxed and got frustrated that entire fight. And he almost pulled it out of the bag. Well said, Andy. He was very professional and very focused. Even when Fury was doing those licking signs in his face, Deontay Wilder, to his credit, stayed focused throughout. Good point. Yep, he was getting frustrated, he was getting marked up and stuff like that. His camp, for example, were, 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 were positive with him. He thought they were winning the fight. And I'll tell you one thing, he took a lot of shit, by the way, but Ben Davis needs a bit of credit as well because he was calm, he was collected in that corner, he was telling Fury what to do, not to get greedy with the right hand. Sometimes he was getting greedy. He was telling him to kind of like, you know, just don't sit your feet too often, get your, get your combinations off, get out of distance and stuff like that. So Ben Davis needs a bit of credit here as well. Um, and I, I'll tell you one thing as well. Another piece of credit used to go, and I've seen Americans give this guy a lot of shit in the past for how he handles a, handles a, a fight. Jack Reese was absolutely bang on with that 12th mm -hmm. knock down there last night. There would have been a lot of lesser referees would have pulled that fight off right. I mean, as I say, I thought Tyson was out cold. Bobby was out cold, but he's, he's lying the way he's lying, he's thinking to himself, he's out, he's dead, he's not getting up. British ring, that fight's yep. over. No, that fight, no count. There is no count. That fight is absolutely off. And what happens, he gives him the proper count, gives him every respect to get up off his feet. And by Christ, did he, and he not just get up off his feet. He then decides to go in the fucking front foot and starts attacking him. I'm saying, I'm saying what the fuck? I mean, this this is a fight who some people, I was, I was one of them, I believe that could have been a, a, a bit of snooze face and stuff like that. But by Christ, you know, I thought that I was, it was the, the round was ticked by quickly. I was riveted. I was stuck to my seat and stuff. I was like, come on, man. This, this, is, this is a fantastic fight. 
you know, as I say, you know, f- fair, fair credit to, to, to Elder and how he handled himself there last night, by the way. As I say, he almost pulled it out of the bag there in dramatic fashion. You know, Fury as well. I mean, absolute respect him. But at the same time, as there's, there's, there's a bit of me, a nagging feeling behind my head here as to how Fury handled that after last night. By the way. Because he won that fight and he's not pissed off. He's no raging and stuff. And... I, I really I didn't want to say that maybe the fix was in by by both guys and stuff like that. But if you look at the judges and stuff like that, you could think something's fucking up. You know, there's there's no way, absolutely zero way that you know that that, that fight is a draw. I mean, unless that fight is totally different at ringside, you got a different viewpoint. Maybe Tyson's punches were getting blocked. That we weren't seeing something differently on TV. I do not know, but there is no way, zero chance that Wilder won that fight or that fight is a draw. In my opinion. I had it 116, 110 to Tyson Fury. He was pissing that fight out of the park. Even the two knockdowns. You know, there is there is zero, zero chance that fight was a draw. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's reminiscent going back to like Lennox Lewis and the Vander Holyfield. You know, you think to yourself, come on, is it really is it really going to be like that? Larry uh, O'Connell with the Phil Edwards type score back yeah, then. Yeah, it? it was just absolutely it was pathetic. At the end of the day, you know, we've got I, I disagree with Tommy, but we've got to have the rematch. We need to have the rematch. We need to we need a winner here. We need to get something officially done. You know, we're gonna go back to Golovkin Canelo. We all believe that Golovkin won that fight apart from Tommy. It's his opinion at the end of the day, but you know. Just, just you know, boxing won there. Like, we should have won there last night. I mean, for us, for us as boxing fans, you know, that was everything we wanted to see last night for a heavyweight title fight. It was the most significant heavyweight title fight in America's in American soil in about twenty years, and we get that fucking bullshit decision. You mm. got a, you got a guy in Wilder who was desperate, fucking desperate to prove himself against a top fighter. You got Tyson Fury coming back off depression, alcoholism, cocaine, you know, everything. All the weight loss, everything was against him there last night, and he goes in there and puts on a performance like that. Now you could say they may be tired and maybe as the fight wore, wore on and stuff, but no, I'm sorry. You know, even in round seven, great round by by Fury. I think it was in round uh, was it round nine? I think he got dropped in. He come back in the tenth, and he's fucking fighting like I was like, wow. You know, you, you he made a statement in the tenth. Yeah, I thought psychologically as much as psychologically, anything else. and I, I thought to myself. Well, there was all in at one point because he, he really pushed for that stoppage in the, uh, in the uh, round round nine, and then it, to me it looked like he was just all, all at sea because Fury came back at him in, in, in the in the tenth, the eleventh again it was just like oh my God, what the hell is going to happen here next? And Polly again, you know, another positive. Polly Malinagi called it absolutely bang on the money there last night. You know, he says to me, I think he said something along the lines of you know. I do my job properly if I'm telling the, the, the viewers or the listeners that I've got uh, Fury winning this fight clearly and yet they put in a scorecard like that. What does that make me look like? Mm. Steve Farhood had Fury winning at 115-111. I agree to that score, yeah. Right, Steve Farhood, who in my opinion is, you know, he's a Hall of Famer for Christ's sake for, for what he's done for broadcasting. You try to tell me that guy can't score a fight. He's a fucking boxing story. He's seen more fights than I've fucking watched in my lifetime. And I had the same score, I had the same score, 115-111. Fat Dan, 114-112 to, to Weldon. Oh Absolutely God. wank. I mean, end of the days, last night, I mean, <laughs> I remember back, going back to the forum days and stuff like that, people would call Fury half Ali, half Riddick Bow. Well, I'll tell you what, by the way, see last night in that 12th round, he got up off that canvas like fucking Ali did against Frazier in that 15th round in that fucking first fight. He was out of that. It was same with Ali. Okay, Ali was up at the count of four against Frazier. But I'll tell you what, what a fucking, you know, a phoenix for the ashes, man. His mm. career, his reputation, see that bit, see everything's that been, 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 uh, been restored. See that bit in Braveheart when Mel Gibson looks up at the sky after that Irish guy sees him? <laughs> I, done, I done that when Fury got up in that 12th round. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm saying to myself, there must be somebody up there, man. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah. Somebody looking down on Tyson, man. I'll, 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 I'll close up by saying this. Yes. Fury, we've heard it the fighters before, they're willing to die in the ring You'll need to nail me at the canvas. Tyson Fury will not be beaten. No mother, no man born from his mother's cunt can beat me. But last night he fucking proved that he's no all talk. Okay, he got up off his arse when you know the moment called for it on the count of nine and a half. He was up and ready to go. And he passed all the tests. And again, I say I'll say it again, Jack Reese needs all the respect in the world for how he handled that there last night. That was absolutely first class officiating. And if a rematch happens, he should be the man in the man in the middle. In fact, he should be the man in the middle for all. Uh, big fights in future because he got to absolutely spot on there last night. 
Well said, Andy. You've heard from Andy. You've heard from Tommy. Big fights call for big panels. We've got Dave the Hater low back. We've got Donny on with us as well. Gabe's lurking about. Ozzy Smith coming to you next, Ozzy. Also, Bryn Jonathan Butler's with us. Delighted to have Bryn on board. We'll fly through as quickly as we can, boys. Uh, Paul Massingen said, what a disgrace of a result. Hopefully the bomber will be a man and give Fury a rematch in the UK. I'd say it probably take place in New York, possibly or somewhere like that if the rematch happens. And what a sportsman Fury is, the way he handled the draw. Ozzy, I'm not going to lead you in with any questions. Just get stuck straight in there. What was your thoughts and opinions? Uh, what what a great fight, first up. Uh, really enjoyable, I think, for all the stick that Tyson Fury gets pre-fight where people say he's boring, doesn't entertain people. That went out the window last night. And I think at times he put on a masterclass. Uh, I said he had the skills and ability to make Deontay Wilder look very silly and foolish, and he did. Uh, in my opinion, I think Wilder only won two clear rounds. And they were the ones with a knockdown. And I think in both uh, both rounds where Fury was knocked down, he actually finished the stronger towards the back end of the round, particularly in round 12, which when he hit the canvas, I thought it's like so. I couldn't believe it. And I was gutted, absolutely gutted, because I think for the performance he put on, just to see him go down like he did, I thought it, you, you just couldn't see it happening. And the way he got up, I mean, it's like he was... I don't even think he was that badly hurt. It wasn't, you know, like he didn't get up and he was, wasn't on, like, spaghetti legs or anything like that. And like I said, he was within 30 seconds. He, his head seemed clear enough and he was he was the one backing Wilder up. Uh, in terms of the result, it is an utter shambles and a disgrace. An utter disgrace and... For me, judges need to be made need to be made to answer these scores. I mean, the Mexican guy. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand how you can award that fight to Deontay Wilder by the score he did. I, I just physically cannot understand it. I, I just don't get it. Um, Phil Ed people, people Aussie were, were uh, worried about the inexperience, weren't they? The other judge, I believe he might have been Canadian, who gave it to Fury. Yeah, and I, I mean, like I said, I, I thought uh, Robert Tapper, I, thought, I mean, he, he scored it by two points, which I actually thought was a bit close. I think I had mine, I think it, mine was 116, 110, or something like that. I yeah. thought Fury relatively you're pissed. Same it. as me, mate, I think. I think you were the same as me, 116, 110. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I, I didn't... Callis Sowerland gave... was the same as us, Andy, as well. I have not seen one person, apart from Dan Raphael and Shelley Finkel, say... Clarissa yeah, Shields. Clarissa <laughs> Shields, yeah. LU of the week. <laughs> well, we, yeah, well, I was going to say, she's absolutely clueless. Oh, Ozzy, why was Mark Breland so passive? Excellent fighter. In the corner, I thought, why is Breland not putting a firework at Wilder's arse? He seemed to be seeing something that I wasn't seeing. This is the thing, and, and it makes you wonder, doesn't it? What what were they possibly seeing that they felt Deontay Wilder was, one, in the fight, and two, ahead? Yeah, you need a big last round. Yeah. God, you need about seven knockdowns or something, exactly. I thought. And, I mean, he nearly pulled it out of the bag with the, with the knockdown, which is what we all thought he needed. Uh, well, a stoppage. Uh, re really strange tactics in Wilder. I thought he was poor. I thought he was badly exposed. I mean, we've seen him out box before, but... Uh, some of it last night reminded me of, you know, the Saunders Lemieux, where he was just, Fury was gone, long gone by the time Wilder was winging in shots from all different angles. Uh, for Tyson Fury, I think pre-fight, he copped a lot of stick. A lot of questions were made about how he'd caught with the weight, the huge weight loss, his camp, his team. What would he be like without Peter Fury? All the questions were answered, in my opinion. For me, mentally, he looks better than he was Without Peter, uh, with, with when he was, uh, he looks better now than when he did with Peter, in my opinion. Mentally, physically, he's there as well. And kudos to Ben Davidson. I mean, the last time we saw him in a corner prior to Tyson Fury was the shambles in uh, Scotland with Billy Joe. Yeah, to and, and, I mean, and when we all heard, I think not one person said it was a smart move by Tyson Fury. Well, what a move it was. Davidson surrounded himself with experienced people. Wasn't, you know, too like big headed to think, oh, I can't bring anybody. You know, he brought Ricky Hatton in, Freddie Roach. He could have easily brought people in, you know, that were, 
you know, like were beneath him, if you were to say. He brought the experienced people in. He went over to America early, did the camp over there, and it clearly worked. And the story of Tyson Fury goes on. And last night I felt that we saw the best two heavyweights on the planet. I would happily take Tyson Fury to school Anthony Joshua, and I would also take Deontay Wilder to knock out Anthony Joshua as well. With a rematch, do we see it? Both of them seem coy about committing to the next fight. Mm. I, I wonder if I wonder if Wilder wants the Joshua fight next because I think whilst he claims he won the fight, deep down, does he really believe that? I'm not sure. No, he doesn't. He knows. You could tell. Yeah. So yeah, I, right, right after the fight when he cuddled, it was either Finkel or it was at Breland. You could, you could tell the way he was reacting. I, 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 he, looked, he looked a beaten man, in my opinion. And when he got the draw, there was one person who was over the moon and there was one who was disheartened. And the disheartened one was Tyson Fury. Yes. I mean, he handled himself with great dignity. He could have easily kicked off. I mean, he said himself, there were a hell of a lot of travellers in there. And had he kicked off, there would have been a huge riot. I thought he, were, he was a pleasure he seemed to deal with. Like I said, do we see the rematch next? I'm not too sure. I mean, if Fury gets another another fight under his belt and then goes into one with either Wilder or Joshua, he's only going to get sharper. We've got to remember he was in with Francesco Pianetta and Sefer Safiri. He got the rounds in, but like I said, they weren't they didn't really make him work. That was a proper fight for him last night, and he won the fight as well. And what do we reckon he was out there? Seventy percent of his best, seventy-five percent. He's only going to get better, and for me, he's the best heavyweight on the planet. His best performance to date, by I mean, people say, "Oh, he's, he's, he's you know, he, you know what Herm is saying and stuff like that." But in the day, is Fury stepped up and he proved that he can fight. And by Christ, man! Tell you what, he also proved he's got a chin because previously yeah. people have always said he's got a glass jaw. I think he's been hurt for about twelve seconds in his career. And that was round 12 yeah. last It's night. the same as Lennox Lewis, Aussie, isn't it? Everyone, it? It always went around that he had a bad chin after McCall, but then you have Kurt putting up these gifts and stuff of him against the likes of Ray Mercer, Shannon Briggs. You know, I don't think Lewis had a bad chin. And I think the same is probably the case with, with, with Tyson. Yeah, because the first knockdown last night, I didn't think it was a bad knockdown. I actually thought, he'd, at first, when I'm seeing it live, I thought he'd kind of, you know, just like took a tumble. Now, it was a clear shot, good shot right behind the back of the yeah, head. Brim, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he didn't seem hurt at all, Fury. Uh, like I said, the second one was, fuck me, was just astonishing. Well, the left hook didn't help, did it, as he was going to? Well, well, do you know what it reminded me of? In the Klitschko-Joshua fight, had Klitschko landed that left hook, I don't think Joshua would have got up, uh -huh. but he missed. Wilder landed that left hook, and I think that was the real damaging shot, and, and Fury got up. So, mm -hmm. like I said, he... Uh, the, the one thing, if anything, he lacks is, you know, like a real power punch, Tyson Fury. But he doesn't need it because I think he'd school Joshua. He would take him to bits. He, he just wouldn't get near him. Like I said, Wilder's got that dynamite right hand, which can land any, end any fight. Joshua can hit hard, but not in a, you know, like a one concussive uh, punch. And I don't think he'd get anywhere near Fury. But I'll, uh, I'll let the other lads jump in anyway. Yeah, like, yeah. There's loads to talk about. Thanks, Ozzy. Um, yeah, Richard Allen threw in a question. We've pretty much already answered this. If the Fury fight was in the UK, is he even allowed to get up by our officials and medics? I think no. I think I've already answered that one. Gaza Palooza was going on about rematches, Ireland, Manchester. I said before, I think it'll probably be in New York or somewhere. And it might not be the next fight. I don't know. We'll, have, we'll talk later on about possible uh, next fight fights for Wilder and for Fury if they don't fight each other. Uh, let's get our special guest on, Bryn Jonathan Butler's on the call. Always a delight to have you on, Bryn. Uh, how are you? And uh, did you enjoy the fight last night? He's on mute, by the way, just so he, just so he knows. Yeah, you might have to unmute yourself, Bryn. I don't have that facility to unmute you, unfortunately. You might can have to do that on your device. Yep, can hear you perfectly. How are you, sir? Okay. I'm doing really well. I just missed the beginning of your question, unfortunately. Sorry. No problem, Bryn. It wasn't much of a question, to be honest with you. I was just asking you if you, if you enjoyed the fight. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. And it was fascinating how it lived up to the predictions of the English journalists who showed up with me in Tuscaloosa to watch him to watch Wilder train and spar. We watched him for about five minutes and everybody had the same impression that if he's unable to land the right hand, uh, Fury is just going to box circles around him. And it was thrilling to watch him do it. 
uh, I, I was blown away by the performance that Tyson Fury put on, and I think it exposed Wilder. I think his stock went dramatically down after this fight, which isn't to take away any credit from what from what Fury was able to do, but um, fascinating fight, bizarre, strange ending. I could easily see any judge giving 10 rounds to Fury in that fight, and I wouldn't have much opposition to it, but comfortably four or five rounds ahead. So a draw, is, as some of the previous speakers said, it, it felt a lot like Lewis and Holyfield, which I thought was disastrous for the sport, and, and this doesn't even have a Don King to blame for it. Um, but I, I loved what I saw from... Yeah, but... That leaves out... Sorry, just that leaves out just what he came back from. You know, even if he hadn't come back from that, I'd say this was thrilling. But he came back from incredible circumstances. Yeah, uh, Bryn, you mentioned there Wilder. Obviously, we saw him having the problem getting the right hand off last night. And you referred to the fact that you were watching him sparring. Do you want to give us any any inside information about the... You were there in the camp, weren't you, with Wilder watching him prepare? I was. I watched his first two days of sparring with three different opponents and... I was joking with the other journalists from England to say that he lost the majority of the rounds there. Um, he, he really wasn't able to pull the trigger on the right hand with any frequency. It's still a very impressive punch, but I was just amazed that why wouldn't he utilize this great tool that he has that's been so devastating throughout his career. And he was pushed around. He, was, he had trouble um, getting caught with the jab. He had trouble utilizing his own jab. He was fighting big men who were, in some cases, impersonating Fury style, which it was just um, it was just surreal to see somebody who who is called heavyweight champion. Uh, Breland told me that Wilder skill wise is at about where Breland was at 11 years old. <laughs> and as you watched him shadow boxing and sparring, it didn't seem like that was hyperbole. Do you think he overtrained, Urban? No, I don't. I think he's somebody who's always in shape. I mean, he came in very light. I think he's the only heavyweight, like uh, elite level heavyweight that I've ever met where food isn't a little bit of a problem. He doesn't have much of an appetite. And I've never met a heavyweight where that was the case. Food is always a little bit of an issue. They're always fluctuating in weight. I think Wilder, I've never been around a champion before where you have no sense that they're, they're actually a boxer, that like his entire build looks like a wide receiver in football or a basketball player, probably more like a basketball player, but he doesn't look like a boxer while he's training. But then he throws this right hand that I think you could argue is as dangerous as any heavyweight champion has ever had. Lethal, a blow it is, fast he can get it off for a guy who dies, but the rest of his arsenal... Is, is pathetic. I mean, it, it's just, it's not even amateur level. It looks, it looks like a charity boxing match between football players or something like that. It doesn't look, it just does not look like a professional boxer. And Fury, I think, is a very good boxer for a heavyweight, let alone a heavyweight his size. He's very skilled. He's tactically, he, he's a brilliant tactician. He can move around very effectively. Um, the only flaw is he doesn't seem to have much power in his blows. But, you know, he put everything together. He dropped, what, 144 pounds mm. to get in condition for this. He was hungry. And I think he had nothing to lose where Wilder was accepting enormous risk in looking bad in this fight or losing and some big upside. But it was a very, very dangerous fight for Wilder to take because his stock, you know, his earning power going forward with this I think is going to be pretty dramatically affected. He was only guaranteed $4 million for this fight. I don't know how well it's done on pay-per-view yet, but it gave me the sense certainly that as you guys were saying, maybe Fury is the real talent of the three top guys in the division. I, I, pr I think I would probably favor Fury against, against uh, Joshua if they squared off, if he's in the same kind of condition he was for this. And I like Joshua a lot, but, Wilder by far seems the least skilled. He just might be the most powerful with a one punch knockout and any of these guys are capable of getting hit by it. But had fear had fury not, you know, been able in 36 minutes to avoid that right hand. I, I think he might've routed him 
in this fight legitimately. So I'm very curious to see where it goes from here because both these guys are getting up there a little bit in age. Wilder is the oldest of the three at 33, but Fury obviously has a little more miles on his engine as the re- result of the way he's lived outside the ring. So I, I hope they can get a rematch very quickly and bring Joshua into the mix of this to sort of just let's see how good they are against each other with the, how the styles mix. Ben, I want to stick with you for a couple more questions, if that's okay, uh, while sure. we have you. Uh, we, we, we've already touched upon this, but one of our listeners, Ross Phillips, sent in a question asking us to explain, and I'll ask you to explain, hopefully, Bryn, how this judge, Alejandro Rochin, scored the fight, especially having the first four rounds to Deontay Wilder. What was he watching, Bryn? It's just, yeah, it gives every indication that says criminal negligence. I, I don't. I don't understand. I can accept a little bit of a discrepancy from being at a fight live wh- rather than watching on television. I think that I have a much better perspective on television than I do ringside going to, to all the fights that I do in New York. But two or three rounds is about as much as I've ever been willing to change it when I get home after a fight and watch it on TV. So I, I, I just think it's completely inexplicable. And once you see something that, that, that's that inexplicable, with a massive financial incentive by I don't know who, but certainly Wilder is the one that you would think people want to sort of invest in to move it towards Joshua so that more people make money than if Fury were to win the fight. So I think, I think it looks terrible. It's a, you know, the vast majority of the text messages I got after this fight were people just saying, I hate this sport. And these are people who love the sport, but they just hate this kind of thing of just boxing, never missing an opportunity to shoot itself in the foot when you have a great fight and the fight now is defined by this absurd decision. It's very, very frustrating. Obviously, you spend a lot of time uh, sort of keeping an eye on Cuban boxing. We know your history with Rigondo and stuff. You've got uh, King Kong Ortiz there, Bryn. Luis Ortiz, he he got a win last night as well. Where does he fit into the, the whole heavyweight puzzle? Well, he very nearly would have been the guy fighting Fury. You know, if he could close out the seventh round against Wilder, he just had to finish him, and he almost did. I give Wilder credit for coming back. I just wish that Ortiz, who I think is a you know skilled, big, powerful guy, but he just happens to be 65 years old, give or take a day. So, you know, that, that mileage is there with him. But uh, I think he's dangerous for anybody to fight, which is the reason why everybody's avoided him. Because there's, as, as is almost always the case with Cuban fighters, there's no upside financially to fight them because they bring zero audience. And there's a lot of risk. And he showed that with Wilder. And that was really the one crucible for Wilder that made people say maybe he's not all hype. But I think now Fury has sort of doubled down on, on what Ortiz was able to show. So, uh, you know, and, and Fury also, I think a lot of people didn't give him the credit he deserved until he really did what he did against Klitschko. But now he's done it again, come back from what he did against a Wilder. Uh, I don't know what the odds ended up being in terms of this fight about who would win. I think I saw six to one odds about a knockout, knocking out Fury. But um, yeah, I think Ortiz is a dangerous boogeyman. It's just, he just doesn't bring any money to the table and neither does Wilder. So I think the, the logical place for this to go pretty quickly is, is to get Fury and Joshua in there to see what can happen there. But I, that is if, if the rematch is unable to happen with Wilder. But I, I, don't, know, I don't know if Wilder would want this fight again because it, it, he might not land that right hand and he could lose. You know, Getting routed by a, a unanimous decision could look very, very bad for him and his prospects for the future. And when I interviewed him in Tuscaloosa, it didn't sound like he wants to stay in boxing for, for a long time. He sort of wants to cash out. And just before we bring the other guys in, Bryn, Andy was asking about Freddie Roach. His comments, he com- uh, obviously, Freddie, we have a lot of mind games, don't we, before fights. And, he, and Freddie was talking about uh, Deontay Wilder possibly going through a poor camp. You've mentioned the camp yourself there. What do you think about Freddie's comments on Wilder's camp? My sense was that Wilder's camp, it was the first time I've ever seen it. I've never been around Wilder. I have seen, I watched his Ortiz fight that he had in New York. Uh, I've watched a number of his fights. I've never been around his people. I liked his people. I, I think the world of Mark Breland in terms of his career uh, as an amateur and as a pro. But 
I've never quite seen a camp operating like that ever before. And I've been around several Hall of Fame trainer, trainers up close for extended periods with fighters. Ronnie Shields with Rigondeau, uh, Freddie Roach with a number of different fighters. And it, I've just never seen anything like what Wilder and, and JDs were doing where there were just instructions that I was just thinking, this is a heavyweight champion. Is this really going to help him against Fury? Because I don't know how to glean that from what I'm seeing. Um, you know, these are guys who are new to the game in a lot of ways. And even though Wilder is a 10-year veteran, let's remember, which is crazy to me that he's been in the game 10 years and is only now fighting real quality competition. Um, I, don't, I don't know that he's entirely ready for, for elite level competition because I just, I just don't think he has the skills to be in there with people that are very capable as I think Ortiz showed, and I think Fury showed, and I think very likely Joshua could show. Uh, I, before this fight, I put out a tweet just to say, if I had to call this fight, what I find fascinating about it is it's just as probable that Deontay Wilder could land a right hand early in the fight and knock out Fury, and it's over and done with. Or Fury, if he doesn't get hit, could win every single round. And I felt like we saw a bit of both of those in the fight that actually happened. And most of the time I'm wrong with predictions, but I feel like there's a, there's a piece of both of, of those as a takeaway in what happened here. So I think Fr Freddie, Freddie is a, the best trainer that I've ever seen, probably other than Pedro Diaz, uh, the great Cuban trainer with a PhD. Um, Freddie does love to play mind games, but when I heard that Freddie was in Tyson, Tyson Fury's camp, I, I thought this is a really smart thing for Fury to do. And being around him, being around wild card, uh, that was always an energy for the most part that was very, very positive on, on fighters. So I thought, oh, that I think improves his chances in my mind. And I, I'm starting less and less to think that Fury is just trying to get a payday here. I think he really is trying to make the most of this opportunity. And, and he really has something to fight for. Wilder, Wilder I don't know. It, it, it seems like he's, he's very interested in legacy but I, I've just never seen a training camp like what he had. But to answer the guy's question, and I apologize for being long-winded about it, mm -hmm. for all I know, that's exactly how every training camp he's ever had has been. Uh, I didn't think there was anything different about it than what had happened in the past. And his trainer had said Wilder was the hardest worker he's ever seen. I just, it just seemed kind of romper room to me and just really, really basic. I've seen boxer size classes with 60-year-old you know, women that seemed more focused than this was for a, a heavyweight championship. So I don't know if that's the way they've always done things. As I say, it's a one-time snapshot for me about what I saw, but it, it didn't seem like anybody else was reacting as if it was different. It just had a little more exposure from the press, but otherwise it seemed like they're just going about their business, which is kind of frightening because <laughs> it didn't yeah. seem like he was getting ready to fight Tyson Fury, a, a peak level Tyson Fury to my eyes. A pretty damning indictment there from Bryn. Uh, Bryn, it's always good to have you on for your insight. Feel free to stay as long as you wish. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm in Mexico, so I may have to drop off pretty quick, but I'd love to listen to some, some more chat about this. Not a problem, sir. Thank you. Yeah, that was Bryn there. Good to hear Bryn's thoughts as always. Joining us on the call now, we have our second guest of the evening. Delighted to welcome welterweight Liam Taylor. How are you, Liam? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Cheers. We're just talking about the big fight last night, obviously, Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder. I'm assuming you saw it, Liam. If you did, what was your take? Yeah, I got up for the fight. Um, I thought Fury was amazing. You know, I thought before the fight, I thought maybe he'd struggle a little bit, you know, with the amount of weight he's lost and how quick he lost it, you know, to take a punch. But he proved me and everyone else, you know, they, they, they could really take a punch and he could box out of his skin like he did. Probably a better performance than what he put up against Klitschko and I thought he deserved the win. Yeah, we th we thought he did as well. What about the George Alejandro Rochine giving it to Wilder by four rounds? It doesn't seem quite right, does it? It's it's unbelievable. Like you say, you know, without us seeing not know how wide would it have been. It, you know, it, it, it was disgusting really to see, and also the English judge, you know, <laughs> giving it a draw as well. It's expecting just to favour the British man a little bit on the close rounds, and obviously he didn't. So yeah, it's, it's bad to see really. 
Well, you mentioned that, Liam, and that's an interesting point that you raised. Do you think sometimes the likes of Phil Edwards would go over there? He is only human at the end of the day, and he has it in the back of his mind. I don't want to look too biased here. So he's maybe actually sort of, you know, levelling it up in favour of Wilder yeah. almost. I know it sounds a bit strange. Exactly. No, yes. I, I, listen, like I say, the human at the end of the day, all the rest of the judges and, and the referees, but, but, but they're still human. So you'd think they'd favour towards the man that's from their country, especially with close rounds that could go either way. You, you think they favour the man from their country, but I haven't seen the, the thing with him, did it? No, exactly. And just before we move on to your career, you've got Fury, you've got Wilder, you've got Anthony Joshua, obviously, as well. Who do you think is the yeah. best of the three? By far, Fiore, definitely. Like go, going off last night's performance, you know where you're at now with Fiore. And I, in my opinion, his movements only going to get better. You know, we're, we're more, we're, we've obviously been active again. And yeah, definitely, Fiore. You're a 20 and 1 at the moment, Liam, looking at your career yeah. there, 10 knockouts. In your last uh, fight there, just recently, you defeated Tyrone Nurse, who had been the only yeah. person who defeated you. So it feels like. You know, you're sort of not starting from scratch as such, but you've righted a wrong there, maybe, and it's time to move on towards the big title fights. Would you say? Yeah, definitely. You know, I'll clean the slate with with, with my last win, so um, and I've also improved as a fight myself. You know, with that win, so I've put, so I say, put, I can now push on and, and move move forward after after putting the the, the wrong right. So yeah. Torian Nurse is a tricky opponent. He's obviously fought at British title level. Where do you see yourself going now in the immediate future? Obviously, I'd say, you know, I was an eliminator for the British title that I won, so I think that next should be the British title, if not a final eliminator. But like I say, I fully expect it to win the British title to beat such a tricky customer in Tyrone Nurse. What about the fight itself? Uh, give us uh, the lowdown for anybody who didn't see it. How did you feel it played out? Because it, it was a split decision, wasn't it? <laughs> It was a split decision. What again? One that I didn't think should have been a split decision. But you know, the guy who give give the um, the fight to, to Nurse was from Yorkshire. So again, you know, a little bit of he's from the same sort of area. Mm. But it's one of the things. You know, the Tyrone Nurse was not a you known level fighter around the British scene. So any close rounds, I believed was going to him when they should have been going to me. You know, like I say, I think going off off the scoring, they give him probably the first four rounds and give him the last couple. But I believe. I won the first of the couple, but um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it was. I, I think it was a good fight, um, but I, I think I won it by by four rounds. Yeah, just remind our listeners we've got Liam Taylor on the call, twenty and one, uh, well to wait. Any social media presence or anything, Liam? Um, yeah, it, I've got Instagram and um, and Twitter as well. Yeah, um, Liam Taylor twenty and Liam Taylor ninety one on um, on both of them. Yeah. Yeah, just, That's the name. Okay, everybody listening, go and go and give Liam a, a follow. Just a few more questions. You, you mentioned the British title there. Am I right in saying Johnny Garton is the champion? Yeah, Johnny Garton from London is the champion at the minute, yeah. Um, I'd say he's a strong fighter. Um, he seems quite, you know, he, 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 can, he can punch, he can box a little bit. So, you know, he's a good champion, one that's going to be hard to beat, but one that I think he can beat. He had a good fight with Gary Corcoran. Did you see that one? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, did, I only seen bits of it all, so at the time I was in America, obviously my, my stable mate Terry, Terry Flanagan was fighting in New Orleans, so it was over there in LA at the time training, so I, I watched it the next day, just like I say, clips of it, I did expect um, Corcoran to win that fight, and, and he didn't, so Johnny Garton, like I say, proved me wrong in that, cause in his show, known his better fight than what I expected, so one that I would, would definitely be taking serious if, it, if the fight got made. You mentioned Terry Flanagan there. Obviously, you're training alongside Terry with Steve Maylett. What's Terry like to, to fight against? Obviously, you've, you've probably sparred a few rounds with him yeah. over the years. Yeah, I've sparred you know, loads of rounds with him. He's, he's a very, very good talent. You know, he's, he's got amazing footwork, and that's one thing that I think makes him better than most fighters, his footwork, the way he can drift the range and, and the distance very well. Um, he's got fast hands. So, yeah, the, like I say, he was, he was unlucky in his last fight. He's up against some moves. He can punch and, and very, very good. Um, but I still expect him to, you know, win a world title, or maybe at lightweight if he's like that or not, or you know, get the lesser champion. Uh, you're number twelve according to Boxrec in the British rankings. Just uh, wanted to get your opinion on a few other fighters in and around your your sort of number. You've got Conor Ben in at number ten. I don't think they'll be putting him in with anybody like you anytime soon, though. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I know Steve Wood and, and Steve Mailer, uh, my coach, my manager, have, have asked, I think, matchrooms, matchmakers for the fight in the past before the nurse fight. And, and then, you know, they never got back to us about that. So I'm happy to say that fight if, if he ever wants it, you know, 
looking at some of the, the, the opposition, you know, he went to hell and back and he's lost the fight, then he mm. someone who I believe I'd, I'd, I'd be easy. So, no, I think he'll, he'll stay away from anyone half decent, to be honest. Bradford's Darren Tetley looks like a good fighter. He's obviously over with Frank yeah. Warren. You're managed by Steve Wood, aren't you? So there wouldn't be any problems yeah. making these fights if, if need be? No, no. Again, like I say, the Tetley fight, I know, I know Darren Tetley's a good fighter. He's a southpaw fighter, so I've never really struggled with southpaws. as amateur or pro, you know, like anyone I've ever boxed like that, I'd beat. So I believe that in that fight got made a beating. But again, he's a good fighter. He's, he's, he's been down at the gym, you know, for, for Terry's last fights, barring him for the progress fight. So I watched a bit of him and, and yeah, he's a good fighter. But, but one, again, I think I can be, be, be quite comfortable. So now obviously you've got Toro Nurse out the way. You mentioned the eliminator. What's Steve going to do with you next? What, what's your next fight going to be? What do you expect? <laughs> well, we spoke about this, you know, I think there's a, a meeting with the boxing board this week or next week. So we, I think we're going to put it forward that you know, we're willing to fight Johnny Garner for the British title. Um, for, you know, I expect them to take that on board and hopefully make, make that fight. It, you know, I can't see anyone else who can step up to the mark. The Josh Kelly, who's, who's, who's a good fighter, but I, I think he'll be looking past British level. So I think I'm the only man who, who, who could really get a defence against early, early on next year. You no, know, I'm ready to fight February and March if you want to. Yeah, just finally then, final question. You mentioned Josh Kelly. That's who I was going to ask you about. He looks like a, yeah. a decent talent, but I suppose some of the level of opposition they've put him in with, he's, he's looked really good. But, I mean, once he steps up, is he going to be sort of knocking towards world level, Kelly? You know, how, how good is he? I mean, potentially, yeah. But again, you know, if, if the right fight got offered with the right amount of trick, I, I mean, um, there's no secret. I think I've been, I've been offered that Josh Kelly fight before, but it was on two weeks' notice, you know, to go on a match room bill in Newcastle. It's, it's ridiculous, you know. Give, give me ten weeks to fight someone like him, and I, and I jump at a chance. But, but it's hard to say how good he is. And like you say, you know, his opposition has been handpicked. They're saying yes, be ex world champions, but the ex world champions that I believe I'd do the same too. So he is good. Don't get me wrong, but he needs to be it and work till a bit over, done it, you know, so we can see how good he is. Yeah, we completely agree with that. At Liam Taylor twenty, everybody over on Twitter at Liam Taylor twenty. Liam, thanks for giving up the, uh, some time on your Sunday evening. Really yeah, appreciate no you jumping on. Nice one, mate. Cheers. All the best, Liam. Cheers. Cheers. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Liam Taylor there. Thank you, Ozzy, for sorting that one out. He's 20-1, and one. Liam. Good fighter. They'll not be putting the likes of Conor Ben in with him anytime soon. Let's go right up in weight to hater Dave Lowback. He's carrying a few pounds these days. Maybe a possible future Tyson Fury opponent. Hater Dave, good to have you on the call as always. I have a question for you. Hopefully, I can stall long enough to bring it up on the old computer screen. There we go. Right, Dave, like can, you, the, uh, can you hear me okay? AJ opponent. What were you saying, Gabe? Yeah, I got you. Hang on, Gabe. Gabe's AJ coming AJ opponent. Oh, future AJ opponent. Okay, fair enough. I would right, destroy John... AJ. <laughs> <laughs> you would, you would. Uh, John Kearns has thrown in a question for you, um, Dave. He said, assuming by now the majority of the panel will, will be in agreement, the judges were a disgrace. What is everyone's thought on the ref? I actually thought he was decent and kept his cool very well. Your less experienced refs would have instantly waved the fight off when Fury hit the deck on that second knockdown. And I don't think people would have complained as it's what we are used to these days. A lot of refs, says John Kearns, will look to step in easily, especially with a knockdown as heavy as that. The fact he actually gave him the count and didn't shit himself allowed the fight to go the stretch. What do you think about that? Hey, to Dave Loback. I know you're a fan of Steve Schmoger. You like to see a fighter properly knocked out at the end. So you would have been a fan of Jack Reese's decision making. 100%. He was perfect. Uh, and not many refs, even the good ones, would have uh, would have let that go. And I think if even Jack Reese had waved that off, there would only be a few people today um, sort of half-heartedly saying it was an early stoppage. I think even I probably would have said, well, he was fucked. Um, but the reality is it's much better to give the fighter that chance, I think. I mean, what what, what are a few extra seconds going to do if he's, if he's actually hurt? I mean... <laughs> Is somebody going to run, give him the oxygen fast enough? I don't know. I, I, I'm not a biologist or a doctor, but it seems to me a fighter would like would prefer that chance. Certainly Tyson Fury preferred to have that chance instead of having the fucking weighed off, waved off, and I'm glad it happened as well. Uh, Wilder's team certainly isn't. I know the people who ro were rooting for Wilder uh, are probably not so happy with uh, what happened because uh, if it had been a different ref and – he wins that fight by knockout, and there's really not much uh, opposition to that decision, I don't believe. Fear, or Wilder could very well be the lineal heavyweight champion of the world by 12th round dramatic comeback knockout right now. 
um, in my opinion, thankfully he's not. The, the, the drama is in theory arising from the canvas, and that was incredible. Um, <laughs> I thought he was fucked. I thought it was done when, when he hit the canvas, and he did not hit it lightly. He, it was not, a, it was not a, one of those flash knockdowns. It was hard. Um, but his powers of recuperation were phenomenal. Even though he rose late, he rose. He, he, had, he, he had one second on the on the count left by the time he was like on his feet and facing the ref. D Dave, he, let me uh, jump in here. What? How, how, where was it on the boxing drama scale in terms of we're talking Corrales, Cast Corrales coming back against Castillo. We're talking um, George Foreman coming back, obviously from being out boxed to knock out Michael Mora. We're talking the ultimate Meldrick Taylor getting knocked out by uh, Chavez Senior. Where was this on the boxing comeback scale? Well, it's up there, you know. Um, I never thought that the Meldrick Taylor Chavez one was as dramatic as so much as controversial. I, I still have uh, problems with that stoppage. Um, although, I mean, it's it's controversial either way. Um, I, it's hard to rank these, but it's absolutely up there. I had chills last night seeing him get up like the uh, fucking Undertaker. I'm not a WWF whatever fan, but <laughs> I've seen the memes. Um, it was great. I mean, it was, it, it was like a machine. He was possessed. It was right out of a Rocky movie, really. Like, <laughs> and you had Wilder in his corner, like doing the doing the uh, moonwalk, <laughs> and then he sees him get up, and he's just like, "Oh shit!" Like, really? Well, how much do I have to hit this guy with? But for me, Fury looking good in this fight is what I expected. So both guys' stock goes up for me. I can understand um, people who thought Wilder was better. Um, that saying his stock goes down because he did get uh, boxed for the great majority of the fight. But honestly, that's what I expected. We've seen Wilder get out boxed by uh, Gerald Washington, dropping mo most of the early rounds to him. He, he, he lost uh, several rounds to Spilka. He's not a great boxer. He never has been. His, paler, his powers bailed him out before several times. The, his best boxing performance was probably against... Um, Stiverne. Stiverne, yeah, who was... Uh, quite a plotter in there that night. And of course he just smashed him in the rematch. So Wilder can be given fits and I'm not at all surprised uh, at, at how much he struggled there. What I am surprised is that he was able to get a couple big shots home. I think his stock goes up because he didn't give up. He didn't quit on himself. He stayed in there. He kept trying and he did get the big shots home. Um, without those knockdowns, I mean, it's very embarrassing for him, but he got them. That, that's the, and he could have legitimately won that by stopping. Um, thankfully, he didn't. But uh, I think he he comes home with a lot of uh, respect for me. Um, and that's also goes uh, with how he and Fury handled the uh, decision. They both showed a lot of class. There's a lot of shit talk before this fight. Wilder seemed all week like he was um, out to commit murder. Um, <laughs> Look, the look in his eye was like a psychopath. But uh, both guys hugged after the fight. I mean, it, it was exactly what you want to see out of boxing, up until the judges' cards were read out, of course. But Dave, I, I thought both... you were going to do a Tyson Fury impression there. I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus hey. Christ. He was great. And you know what? Win or no win, he's going to have gained a lot of fans last night, both for getting up, showing the heart he did, um, looking very good against Deontay Wilder and especially <laughs> God bless the USA. And then in the post fight, <laughs> getting the whole press corps to sing American pie. I mean, the guy is charismatic. Oh, he, did, he did that in Belfast as well. Did he do that again? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was part He's... of that after the Pianetta fight. He did that as well. Did you remember the word, Steve? I certainly did. Oh, good. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> Fury. He has the star personality, even if he doesn't have the knockout power. And I think people, even before this fight, uh, I think he had a, a fair amount of American interest. I believe it was Bryn way back when, way back when, I think before Fury even had won the heavyweight title off of Vlad, that he'd come on the pod and told us uh, uh, when he talks to American boxing fans, some of the most questions he gets are about Tyson Fury, just because the guy's sort of, he's bizarre, he's crazy, he's magnetic. In a, in a very strange way. Uh, and he was a crazy man. After he got put on his back and nearly iced, he's putting he's putting his own hands behind his back and taunting Wilder right up to the final bell. Actually, I think he hurt Wilder in the 12th round after he was down. Like, he, he fought back. Uh, it, was, it was just a great night. Tremendous stuff. Um, and, and really, 
for me. Both guys come away with uh, increased status. Both guys, and I love also loved how both of them uh, shot on Joshua. Um, yeah, that was good. I was trying to cut the audio the, for that, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> it was great. I think the Hearns have to be raging about how last night went down. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Had, yes, you had, cool. you had Barry trying to like uh, trying to like uh, polish it a little bit this morning, saying, "Oh, I'm glad Joshua didn't accept fifty million dollars to go over there and get screwed by the American judges." Accidentally admitting to the fact that the fifty million dollar offer was real and that they yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, we all and that they rejected. Good <laughs> job, no, Barry. Wheeling back in. Thanks, hey to Dave. Yeah, bizarre, crazy, magnetic. Etic, he might as well be describing rapping Rob Kelly with all those words. We're coming to you soon, Rob. Also, Gabe's on the call with us as well. Episode 302 of the Asylum Nutters podcast. Right, Donny, you've hung around for long enough. I have a question about judging. When I think of judging, I think of you. For some reason, at Mark DH18 has asked you a question, Donny. He said, in title fights, why doesn't boxing move to five judges to score the fight to avoid one wild card ruining the verdict? Or, Donny, says Mark, would we still find two more cranks and not solve anything at all? I think for like maybe lineal titles or for because I mean just the the economics aren't there at the lower end of the of the um, the sport to just pay for five judges. Um, but uh, you know, you know, in a big fight like this, like a lineal title or, or maybe a title unification, uh, I think a fight of that magnitude well, would benefit from it. And like you said, it would take away. Uh, the ability of one person to uh, potentially turn it, um, you know, which, you know, if the, the, which in this case you had because the other card was a draw. Uh, I didn't find the draw card to be as outlandish, uh, maybe as some people did, but because uh, I scored at 114, 112 for Fury. So, um, so I didn't find 113, 130 to be outrageous. I think it was wrong. I think that if you, you're going to, no matter how you score it, I think even if you're scoring it very generously towards Wilder, it still has to come out. Uh, to a Tyson Fury victory, but, um, but you know, e either way, I mean, uh, yeah, five five judges wouldn't be a bad idea for for fights of this magnitude. Go on, go on to the fight then, Donny. Tell us why you came to the one fourteen one twelve conclusion. Um, well, I think I had two rounds uh, for Wilder where he didn't knock Fury down, mm. and then I had the eighth and the, or I'm sorry, the ninth and the twelfth for by ten eight. So I think that came out to one, one fourteen, one twelve. Um, so yeah, that's how I got there. Uh, onto the fight itself. I mean, the the uh, well, first of all, I want to make two kind of references here. Uh, the the punch that he put him down with in the, the final round, of course, the huge knockdown, uh, reminded me a little bit of Douglas uh, versus Tyson. Remember when he hits him with the you know the big? I think it's the. Um, the right hand, and then he follows it up with a left that misses, and then he hits him with a right on the way down. It's just as this is as the punch that hurt Tyson, ah. uh, and and you know, and and then when and you know that of course put Mike Tyson down, knocked him out. So, I when I saw that uh, in the movie theater, everybody was on their feet and they said, "Oh, this is over! Like, there's no way he's going to get up from this." Uh, and everybody was like fucking shocked when he did, um, you know. And, and we've already said, you know, credit to Jack Reese for that. And then I was thinking of when, when Wilder was like celebrating in the corner, it reminded me of the, the first Rocky movie when, you know, when Apollo's like dancing around and then he looks over and somehow, you know, Rocky gets up like that's uh, that. I mean, it was literally almost like it was out of a movie uh, because of the emotion that was on Wilder's face that just completely just disappeared. And the guy was in total disbelief. Like, how the hell did this guy possibly get up from what I just delivered to him? Because let's face it, for 40 fights, uh, previously, every time Wilder has hit somebody like that, they've never, they've always stayed down. They've never gone up. So it must have been, it must have been shocking beyond belief. And I think also, you know, I was wondering, I was like, why didn't Wilder jump on him some more? Like after that knockdown, like why didn't he really, I felt like he, he didn't really go for it as much. And I think it's because to see him rise up like that, I think it kind of took some energy out of Wilder. Like in, in mentally speaking, like his, you know, he thought that fight was over and, and like, it just, I think it took something out of him to see Fury get up after that. And I think that it, it actually, it actually may have depleted his energy somewhat, um, you know, because like he, he thought that he had given everything that he had and that that was it. And then when he had to get back in and finish the round, uh, I, I just think it, it took something out of him. 
Uh, and you agree with us, Donny, then, that we were talking about Mark Breland earlier. You think that Wilder went out in that 12th round knowing pretty much that he needed to knock him out. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you're right. I was kind of wondering, too, uh, like, why didn't Breland really get in his face and say, like, you know, you need this, you need this to win, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but maybe, maybe Wilder just knew that. I mean, you know, uh, maybe it didn't need to be said. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Also, sometimes it's, you know, the, the corner can whisper to him a little bit or whatever. They might not want to say on television, you need to knock out to win because they might be hoping, hey, you know, if a card goes, you know, the right way for us, you know, we don't want, we don't, we don't want that evidence out there afterwards uh, <laughs> to, to, you know, to under, undercut our own fighter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but, but I think, I think Wilder knew that. I mean, he was, his game plan never changed though. I mean, it was, it, he was trying to land that fucking punch like all night long. Right. And, you know, he finally did. I mean, he even said in the press conference afterwards, he goes, He's like, he goes, I don't know, like, he goes, if he covers his face in baby oil or whatever it is, he goes, that guy is slippery. He's like, he's so hard to hit. Um, and, uh, his right it, hand was too wide, wasn't it? As soon as he straightened up the right hand, he had success. Yeah, it I was, said it that was... last week, actually. He, it was like he was spending all night looking for that right hand. I said that last week, if he couldn't find the right hand, he was all at sea, and then he just happened to find it. But that left hook, holy fuck, man. How he, how he got, I just still can't believe it. The, yeah, the left hook that he followed up with was actually almost looked more vicious than than the right hand, if that's even possible. But, um, but yeah, when he and, he and hitting him on the way down, so he really got hit three times. One, he got the right hand uh, when, like you said, when Wilder straightened it out. Two, he got the left hook on the way down, and then three, he smacked his head against the you know the canvas uh, because he got put down so hard. So you know that was that was a vicious knockdown, um, and I mean. Yeah, I mean, so like I've like I said, I've n- I don't think I've I've ever seen somebody get up from something. Maybe maybe the Ali, you know, Frazier uh, knockdown in the first fight, but yeah, that was that was one of the hardest you know combinations I've seen. And I mean, every, every like one guy in the theater actually shouted, "Oh, that's that's it, it's over." It, it wasn't over. <laughs> so uh, that was that was just something to behold. And you know, it says you know Miles about that is you know not only his chin but also. Uh, his powers of recovery. He was, I think he was gone when he first got to his feet because if you noticed, he kind of put his arms on Jack Reese almost as to, to steady himself. Um, I, I don't think he had his bearings like hundred percent, but kind of like in a, in a Holyfield like fashion. Yeah. He, he, he was able to get it back, uh, you know, within about 20 seconds. Uh, and then he actually landed that big right hand against Wilder, which I think really put Wilder off and trying to finish the fight because he realized he still had a live, uh, opponent in front of him so yeah i'm coming to rob next i have a bit of a niche one about fighters getting back up when they look like they're out of it we'll come to you on that very shortly rob also we're going to be talking to donny stevenson very soon very little on the undercard else we're going to be talking about but the stevenson fight which obviously took part on the same broadcast uh, over in canada we'll be coming to that next so don't worry about that everybody we're not live i'm getting messages people saying where are you where are you if you listen to this later on we're not Fucking live we're banned. we're banned from streaming as i have said on a couple of occasions for the next three months, so we're not live, everybody. People don't fucking listen to us, by the way. I think they think we're taking the piss when we say that we're actually... But anyway, let's not get into it. Fuck <laughs> right, right, Gabe. Right, hold fire, Roberto. Hold fire. We'll, come, we'll go hey, to Gabe, to, uh, and then we'll come to you. Oh. I'll, be, I'll be back in just a little bit, guys. I have to uh, go look at a house, so I'll be... <laughs> oh, what, what are you looking at a house for, Donna? Are you going to rob uh, it, Danny, or what's going on? What's that? You going to rob it or what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm casing the joint. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, I think it's right, a guys, place I'll, to. I'll, I'll be back on a little later, hopefully. Thank you, Donny. See you soon. Okay, what were you saying, Dave? Uh, I think he's looking for a place to do seven year anal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> right, uh, Gabe. Yeah, Matthew Fallon threw in a question, but I think we've already answered this one. He said. Um, one you'll talk about, but is Fury getting off the floor in the 10th? Uh, I think he meant the 9th, maybe the 12th, I don't know. The best there's been in boxing, if not, where does it rank? We talked about great comebacks earlier. What about this one then, Gabe, from uh, Gaza Palooza? He said, has Eddie Hearn got his public uh, got his public get-out Sorry for April the 13th? No, Wilder officially tied up in the rematch, so Dillian White gets the fight, which was planned all along. But a Joshua talk to start off from you, Gabe. It's going to be Dillian White, isn't it? Will Fury and Wilder fight the rematch? That's the question, Gabe. Uh, I don't know. They both seemed like they wanted to last night. I think there's really uh, no reason for them not to go pretty quick and have that rematch. And then go from there. Uh, yeah, I figured 
I figured White gets that fight for a while. And I think that's what most people have thought. Um, it makes the most sense. I mean, I, to me, if I'm if I'm Hearn and I'm trying to find something respectable for uh, Gay J, then that's probably the one I'm looking at. Um, but you know, to me, that that's of, of little to no consequence or relevance, really. Um, they've put they've put White into some good positions. And he's done well, so fair play to him for that. But at the end, I think just, you know, the thing is just who gives a rat's ass? I don't think anybody's going to be clamoring for it except for the AJ fanboys. And, you know, there's plenty of those. Um, I mean, they, they come out of the woodwork last night as well on Twitter. If you if you were browsing through there talking about how, um, you know, I saw one tweet where he could, AJ could beat, beat them both and blah, blah, blah which is completely to me it's irrelevant we've got the two we found the two guys that that are going to put on a good show uh and really probably more so fury than wilder um wilder is a product of his his abilities with that big power shot um and really i think the the thing that that's what makes him exciting and fun to watch but then you have Fury, who brings it to a whole nother level. I mean, the guy's a great boxer. And it was a great fight last night, you know. Anybody who watched that thought it was a great fight um, because it was entertaining as hell to see uh, Fury duck and dodge and move in and out and really just dominate the fight by making Wilder miss. And at every time Wilder uh, came forward and, and, and tried to throw that right hand, you felt like it was about the end. So for me, AJ is of no relevance. Don't care about him. Who cares about the belts? Uh, I'm going to edit that old uh, video of, of Riddick Bo dropping the, uh, no, was it Bo? Yeah, yeah, dropping the WBC belt in the trash uh, to include the IBF, the WBA, WBO, the whole lot of them. Um, because they don't mean shit in the heavyweight division right now. The the king has definitely returned. Did you see Bo at ringside, Gabe? Uh, yeah, I did. I actually did. I thought that was great. I loved Riddick Bo. Um, you know, I, I, I he was definitely a fun fighter to watch in his time. Uh, the the classics with uh, Holyfield are are legendary to me, uh, as I'm sure they are with quite a few people. Um, but you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I could give a rat's ass about Anthony Joshua. Um, he wants to be a coward and stay around and give people lowball bullshit offers. Fuck them. And fuck Eddie Hearn, too. They can all go kiss the ass somewhere else and find something else to do because the people know who the real champion is. And uh, despite me picking against him, he came through. He showed it. You know, I thought that he wasn't going to avoid that big punch. And I thought when it landed, it was going to keep him down. And and to to credit to him for for popping back up, I mean he laid there and I thought he was done, and then he starts trying to get up and he wasn't wobbling when he got up. He just mm. got straight up, and there he goes again. You know, so it was an incredible fight, um, fun to see, and 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 I was I was glad with that. So uh, again, but Gay J, were you right rooting for Wilder then? Where's Alabama in relation to Texas? Oh, to a couple states to the uh, to the east of us, but no, I I don't particularly like Alabama. I don't have any anything there, no connections to it. I've driven through it a couple of times, but fuck uh, up Alabama, basically. Then no, I'm not. Re- I mean, fuck the Alabama football team. If you're talking about if you're talking about American football, <laughs> yeah, but besides that, no, I could give a fuck about Alabama. <laughs> don't bother me, but they ain't my best friends either. Yeah, well said, Gabe. I don't know what your views are on uh, Alabama, Rob, but let's get your views on the fight anyway, shall we? Dippo Osho was in touch, always some good contributions from Dippo. I'm going to throw a few questions your way, Roberto, so deal with them as best as you can. How, sure. does, he, how does either man do against AJ, says Dippo, and does AJ get up from that 12th round knockdown more to the point? Uh, both beat him and no, is the answer to that. Although he did show, he showed good powers of recovery against... Klitschko, but I think Klitschko caught him so early in the round and was very reluctant to jump on him after being already down himself. He hadn't got the really killer instinct anymore and didn't really pull the trigger. 
that much later in the fight after having him hurt. So uh, short answer that I think both beat him, both beat him, and I don't think he would have got up from that. I think that was that was like something that you're only going to see once every fifty years. Like I think I mean the guys made some great points about him being hit on the way down. It reminded me actually. I think Donny said the the Douglas Tyson actually reminded me of Thomas Hearns getting knocked out by Iron the Blade Bagley, Ooh. where he got clipped and then got clipped again on the way down. I was just like, like if you see Fury last night, but he's fucking levitating through the sky like the Matrix, like his soul is leaving his body after he gets hit that <laughs> left hook on the fucking way down. Like his feet were off the fucking ground and he's horizontal and he hit the fucking deck. Well, well here you go then, Bob. Like, here's here's Dippo's third question. Then perfectly moved into it for me. Does Tyson Fury have the best chin in boxing? And if he doesn't, who does? I, I, that's hard to say. I mean, there's fellas that go through their whole career and they don't even get rocked. I mean, yeah. just getting getting put down and getting back up again. I don't think is a sign of a good chin. More so that it's a sign of a good powers of recovery. recovery Having yeah. said that, I think Wilder, like if he hits anybody with that, they're not getting up. Like put any of the top top 10, top 20 heavyweights, they get hit with that combination of punches at that stage in the fight, they're out. And it just bring, it brings me back to last week when we kind of, look, I'm a fan of Fiori. I've been saying it for years. Fiori's one of my favorite fighters. I was more worried because you get you feel like you almost know Tyson Fiori because his personality so big and he's magnetic, as the boys say. Like he, he brings you in, like you're fully invested in the Tyson Fury story. And because of that, you almost feel like you know him. And because of that, you almost feel worried and apprehensive when he was fighting. Like I said in the group chat last night, I feel like I'm having this fight. Like I was so into it. But because of that, I was questioning some of the stuff that had gone on um, in the build up to the fight, like the move from Big Bear, like the bringing in of Freddie Roach, like Ben Davison, like the losing of 10 Stone, all these questions. And what I was saying last week was like, if he loses, you could consider these factors. But if he wins, he's even greater than you thought he was. Because look at the shit that he's after going through over the last three years. It's not like he was out in Miami, like just in a retreat or something, or like keep turning up in the fucking mountains. Like he's been through the absolute yeah. ringers, a lot of it self inflicted. But to lose that weight and even come back is remarkable to me. To lose that weight, go through a drug and alcohol battle, a depression battle, a suicide battle, have a new trainer, move, have two fucking tune-up fights against Safari and Pianeta, and then all of a sudden go and put on a performance like that. I mean, he's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I can't, I can't say enough good, good about Tyson Fury based on that performance. He absolutely fucking dominated the fight. All right, he got clipped. He got put down twice. It's Deontay Wilder, like. Hey, he's knocked out 40 of his opponents he's going to get to you at some stage and hurt you but throughout the rest of the fight Fury dominated him kept him on a jab made him look foolish clowned him did the rounds actually pretty well I thought did, did the rounds I was worried about his legs did the rounds pretty well um, but just fucking rotten judging like like why the fuck are we talking about the judges on Sunday after a fight like this and I know even look the fights even kind of eclipsed the story of the judges I think from the popular, you know, from, from social media, from what I gather, most people are kind of, you know, more happy with the fight and focusing on the great fight that it was rather than the judges scoring. The scoring has kind of become irrelevant because everybody knows who won the fight. But if you're giving that fucking first round, four, first four rounds to Deontay Wilder, there's something, like, you can't be that incompetent. There's something else going on there, like, and it's endemic in our sport. We're never talking about it in other sports. Granted, there was a questionable Rangers goal given offside today, I see, but apart from that... No, Rob, never, no, don't go there. <laughs> we never see it in other sports. We never see it in other sports. We don't see it in tennis. We don't see it in all these other... Uh, rugby, you know, they can get video into to, to assist them. You're looking at a judge giving Deontay Wilder the first four rounds in that fight. Now, any of our listeners go watch the first four rounds and make an argument for Wilder winning them. Make an argument, even. Can't do it. Impossible. So there's something else that's uh, going on there. Like, oh, and it absolutely it stinks. It stinks. If he's really that bad, take away his license and never let him judge again. And get him with Adelaide Bird and put them all in that in them rooms and just and take away their licenses forever because they don't know what you're watching. If you're scoring those fights on a 10-point must system, 10-9, effective aggression, clean punches landed, defense and ring generalship, and Deontay Wilder, Wilder won the first four rounds of that fight, you're fucking dreaming <laughs> or you're corrupt. Rob, you're corrupt says, as fuck. As that says, mate, I went through that guy's... Uh... Yeah, box rec judging account this morning. There's been absolutely nothing in his record to, su to suggest that he was a bad judge. And then last night he right. just beat that type of fucking drop an egg. That was fucking deplorable. Exactly. Danny, Danny Garcia winning eight rounds against uh, La Herrera. Or against um, 
Mauricio Herrera. Mauricio Herrera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was she involved in that fight? I missed that uh, one. Uh, I... Some, somebody tweeted my, me that today. I'm not sure if it's a fact or no, but uh, somebody, somebody did mention that to me today, yeah. Judges do have a bad time, though, but in such a big fight, Rob, and like you say, you broke it down perfectly. I, I can't see what he saw in, like, rounds one, three, and four. What could he have possibly seen? Yeah, that, I think that Wilder won the round. Yeah, that 116, 112, that was a clear Herrera win, so I missed yeah. that one. Yeah, that He's was, a Heyman was... judge. He's up Heyman's ass. I think, yeah. we're, well, I, I, I think we're letting Fall Edwards off a wee bit, a wee bit light here. Yeah, that, well, that's... Week. That's a bad one too. That's a bad one too. But the f- but the the fact that like he gives a couple of those other, like the, like most people had Fury five zip up like so right. he's talking about four rounds and he they have him four rounds down. Floyd had him five like, up, didn't they? <laughs> but it's it's not it's not just even it's not just even. It, or, I see a lot of people saying, "Oh, this in the states." Or oh, Barry Hearn. Oh, I'm glad we didn't go to the states. You shut the fuck up, Barry Hearn, because fucking AJ was up on the Klitschko cards, and he was up in the fucking Pavekin fight as well. So you just have a script ready as well on your side. <laughs> and more of the promoters need to be coming out and talking about this shit and caning these judges instead of catering for them and uh, having them doing favors for them. It's a fucking joke. You're ruining one of the best sports in the world by having to enjoy this shit on the biggest. Look at the look at over the last two years. What were the two biggest fights? This fight. And Clutch Canelo GGG. Klitschko as well. The Klitschko fight was... Klitschko. Right? Klitschko fight. Yeah, exactly. Was that was that was rotten. Rotten. But over the last, say, two, three years, the big, big fights, Canelo Golovkin won. Joke. Andrew Ward, uh, Kovalev, controversial first, first time. I could, see, I could see a lot of people would say Kovalev won at 7-5. Uh, and this fight. Right? Super fights. And then we're getting... We have, we're talking about the judges every time instead of the fights afterwards. It's fucking fucking greed. joke. Fucking greed, that's all it is. I was talking on social media today, it was a, Chris Walker made a good point. He said that um, it's, sometimes it's not the scoring, you've got to look at the rounds and what rounds he's done. You're doing. Like for Phil Edwards, for example, gave you want to a sixth round. That was probably Tyson's best round in the fight. There's absolutely no way he won that round. And, you know, that, that, that's where you've got to look at. And that's where corruption comes in. It's the same like in the Ward Kovalev fight when they've gave Ward the 10th round and that was a massive Koval over in I like well. in the first Canelo fight, Tommy, when um, was it Don Trella Senior gave it the seventh or something to Canelo? I, correct, correct. I even added the gear on that round there. You know, that's okay. I'm not going to hate on Donnie's dad, though. I had the fight. I, I, but, you know, I bet see, that's, what you, that's what you've got to look at. The rounds that, that they're giving in that, you know, it's Phil Edwards gave him, I, I think he gave him uh, what, round one? Round three and no, sorry, one round one, round six and one and round seven. That's I just can't fathom that. I can't, I can't compute it in my brain. Seven's it's, the one for me, Tommy. For Wilder? No, the one I can't understand that they gave him was it? Was it I, six or seven? There was one I, of the two that yeah. I think both rounds were fury rounds. I was either six or seven. No, he, he won one of them very clearly. I'm sure yeah. we're, I'm sure we're on about the same round. It was it was round six, and Phil Edwards was the only judge out of the three. Yep. To give it to Wilder, and I, just, I don't get what they see. I honestly don't get what they see. I've said it before. I, I would actually abolish ringside judging. There's too much controversy now, and I would put them in separate booths with TV monitors, and they watch the fight on mute, no commentary, and then I think you will get better and more conclusive results from that. Instead, you've got no crowd uh, interaction. You know they can't be influenced. They'll see all the angles. They'll all see the same things rather than some to sit in a, a different sides of the ring. And then you can only try it. I mean, what's the point? It, it, you don't lose anything from not having three ringside judges. Fuck them off into a box in the at, arena. At what level, though, Ozzy? Are we talking about all world title fights or, or what level? I would, I would do it at all levels where possible. All levels where possible in the professional game. I mean, uh, on small hall shows, you don't even have ringside judges. You have the referee scoring it up to, I think, um, so central area uh, levels. Mm-hmm. The, the referee does it himself, English and above. Something can definitely be arranged. World titles are 100% because all too often now, the only thing we're discussing is how judges have come to a deci- at the wrong decision rather than breaking down a fight. And it's big, big time. And uh, you know what? Uh, we covered a lot on the pod last week in our predictions on this. And one of our listeners copped it. I can't remember his name. I think he might have put it in the comments, but he was like, nobody's talking about what could potentially happen if Fiori outboxes him and the fix is in. Like, you know what I mean? There, a lot of people are saying, like, we never really kind of covered the fact that he might need to knock him out to win. 
But uh, I think if he even had the bigger ring, like he had a, he had the smaller ring last night than in the Klitschko fight. Yeah, I think if he even had a bigger ring, I don't even see why they're landing those shots. Like, but yeah, fuck the judges. Like, I've seen like on social media today that people are saying, well, the judges have only got like a uh, one angle and that they're, they're, they're obviously positioned in the ring. To me, that that's a copy. That's a lot of shit as well, right? If you look at the guys on Showtime and that they, they're spawn every time, and they've only got one angle of the fight as well. It, it's corruption to me. It's, it's corruption. You're making excuses for them. What needs to happen is these guys need to be held accountable. Um, there's good solid judges out there. They need to get the, they need to get the big fights. The guys that are fucking up, who we see coming back time and time again, they need to be banished, they, and they, they should be working on the fights. That's what's wrong with the sport. Like, these guys keep getting the same chances over and over again. You get to the good judges, the ones that are turning in the good scorecards, you get these guys to fuck. That's what's going to happen. You right there, Tommy? Someone trying to smother you with a pillow? No, I'm just trying to get comfy there. I'm lying in my bed. I'm, I'm, I'm up early. I'm ready for my bed. This is late for me. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know, Tommy. I don't want to keep you for too much longer. I know you want to have an opinion on Adonis Stevenson, so jump in now. Oh, I'm very sad about the ending of the fight last night. He's a big, a big fan of Adonis. I've liked him for years and that. I'm not going to say anything too controversial. I'll say what I've got to say on social media. Look, the guy's done what he's done and that. He's done some horrible, horrible crimes. I was just a wee bit... I just felt... I was cringing when I was looking at some of the tweets and that one, eh, wishing him well and stuff like that. He's done what he's done and that. Eh, he's tortured girls and stuff like that. Eh. Despicable. Uh, I had a wee rant on Twitter about it. I've caught a bit of shit for it. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said it when he's in that condition, but that's what it is. Uh, we'll just I'm say gonna... God visited. God made a visit to I don't know Stevenson last night and kicked his fucking ass to ICU. Well, I, I'm a big believer in karma, right? And uh, he's a piece of shit. What's happened to him? What's happened to him, right? Uh, if you look at Gerald McClellan, piece of shit as well. What's happened to him? What's happened to me? Karma's a bitch, yeah. That's pretty much my point on it. All right, then I'm sure the listeners will have an opinion on that when they listen uh, later on. Tommy, stick around for as long as you can. I know you're flagging over there uh, going into the championship rounds. How have you felt tonight coming back, Tommy, after three years out? All the drink, the drugs, the PED bans. Do you feel strong oh, back on the got a wee story to tell you guys. I've been on a massive weight loss diet crash for about six weeks now. I'm not one of these people to jump on the bandwagons or anything like that, you know, and uh, see how inspired or that, but I was, I was, obviously I was right, I've been writing this Fury stuff and all that and watching what the big guy's done and that and I says, right, if you can do it, get your ass in your gear and I've lost about forty pounds so I'm just living the Good clean man, Tommy. Living, Go the on, clean, Tommy. Living, living the clean life from the lightest I've been in about eight years and the week's flying off about six, seven pounds a week. There's a gypsy thing with see it's melting off face. So I've just been busy, been busy with working, doing that sort of shit and living out, living clean. Eh? So I plan on coming back. Whilst I'm not going to be busy all the time. I'll definitely be back full time at, at, at one point. I'm, I'm, the, like tomorrow morning, I'll be up at quarter to five, four forty-five in the morning to tomorrow morning. Eh? So I'm usually in my bed, lights off about eight o'clock, fucking about in my phone just. Try to get to sleep, so because I need to be up early. So that's how that's pretty much not been on. So, but after Christmas, things should quiet down, and I'll get on full time again. Great to have you back on, Tommy. Good night. God bless. Cheers, mate. Cheers, lads. All the best, mate. Cheers. Cheers, Tom. Right, let's fly through a few other pieces of interest. Uh, Ozzy, let's get a quick undercard rundown from you, shall we? We mentioned Ortiz earlier. Joe Joyce got a first round knockout over Tom Hanks. Chris Ariola won a meaningless fight. Julian Williams won a fight. Uh, Robert Guerrero, nobody cares about that. Uh, Marcellus Wilder, is that some relation to Deontay? Isaac Lowe as well got a win. Jarrett Hurd, uh, brave performance from Jason Wellborn, wasn't it? But he was outgunned. What do you reckon? Marcellus Ozzie? is his brother. Oh, it's his brother. There you go. Thanks, Gabe. There you go, Ozzy. A bit of uh, breaking information, which you probably already knew. Uh, anyway. Steve, just, 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 just a second there. i got to pull you up. You said uh, Joe Joyce got a win over Tom Hanks. Uh, it was actually uh, <laughs> Joe Hanks. Tom I Hanks know, I was... Is, uh, I was I was joking. Though. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you fucked up. I thought you I thought you were wasted, Steve. Fucking up is my forte, but no, I that that was a, an intentional joke. Uh, go ahead, Oliver. Well, Tom Hanks would have put up a better show than fucking. <laughs> you know, an absolute shambles he was. The, the card was garbage, really, wasn't it? I mean, running down Jarrett heard Jason Wellborn heard on the back of a, a long uh, layout with an injury. <sighs> He didn't really show Wellborn any respect. A valiant display from Wellborn, who I mean is by no means world level. I mean, if that was Paul Smith in there, he'd be saying he was world level because 
he competed for three rounds with a world champion. Fair play to Wellborn because you see these guys come in sometimes and they freeze on the big stage, but he didn't. He gave it a go. He let his hands go. Uh, I mean, he didn't really cause any problems or anything. And then he got uh, dropped with an unbelievable body shot and no one was getting up from that. Uh, what else did I see on there? Ortiz, Travis Kaufman, garbage. What a waste of time. Just boring. I mean, uh, for me, in my opinion, Ortiz could have got rid of him. Should have been looking to get rid of him after three, four, five rounds. It just didn't interest me. I mean, regardless of the guy's age, he should be doing getting rid of, of opponents of that caliber uh, out the way. Joe Joyce, like we said, Tom Hanks would have put up a better job than Joe Hanks. And there is talk now, from what was mentioned after it, that Joe Joyce is looking to fight Luis Ortiz, which that's a big step up for Joe Joyce, a really big step up. And I'd be interested in seeing that. So fingers crossed that can be made because uh, I think that's a good fight. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. I think that's a really I, interesting fight. Yeah, because I think it'd be interesting because Joe Joyce, I mean, he looks really awkward and... Not always great to be honest, but then he's got the guy can clearly dig. Um, and but and we've seen him before that when he gets hit as well, he's he's vulnerable, particularly from the amateur days, that he can be hurt as well. And we all know Ortiz can punch. Uh, Isaac Lowe, yeah, he, he won some fringe WBC belt against a bloke I've never heard of and will probably never see again. Uh, the rest of the card, I had no interest in Chris Ariola. What's the point in him? Can't believe he's still going. Julian Williams touted as the uh, next opponent for Jarrett Hurd as well before the uh, Charlo unification fight. So, all in all, I, I only cared about the main event last night. The undercard was was poor, in all honesty. But while I don't agree with it, the, ma the main event did de definitely made up for it uh, in the end. So, we'll just wait and see what happens for the rest of the guys on there. Hurd, Ortiz, Joyce. Yeah, I watched uh, the Herd fight and the main event and the Adonis Stevenson fight, which we'll be talking about soon, uh, all through Showtime feeds. I thought that BT should have picked up the Adonis fight, to be honest, for, for 20 quid, but they, they didn't. Talking to pay-per-view, Smido's on, pay-per-view opinions coming from you, Smid. Ben Thorne's asked a couple of questions. Hit me with these, Smido. How highly does that rank on the robbery scale? Obviously, he's talking about Wilder Fury. And secondly, have we all massively underrated Tyson's chin or have we overrated Wilder's power? I think Tyson's got good powers of recovery, Smido. And I think that Wilder has the power, as he proved, but it's getting into position and landing it. That's the problem. I think that's a good question, Steve. Um, first, firstly, on the scoring, um, I don't think it was in robbery, um, the, the realms of robbery, to be honest. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I would have felt uncomfortable if Wilder would have won, um, but he didn't. It was a draw, obviously. Um, I scored it 8 4, so that means giving Wilder two rounds with knockdowns didn't occur. So I think the second and the 11th, um, I'm not a great scorer as it goes, but it was the kind of fight that you could score because, frankly, in the earlier rounds, there wasn't there wasn't all that much happening. Um, I thought I, I thought after five or six rounds, Fury was would have been by far the happier, but that wasn't to say that he was dominating the fight. Um, It'd have been by far the happier because he would. It, it was his kind of fight. Um, he would have, you know, Wilder looked the one that was becoming a bit frustrated. But there was still there were still rounds that had passed up to that point that you could have probably scored for Wilder um, if they were close. I wasn't because I, w I thought that Fury was making Wilder miss um, a lot, and he was landing to you know only two or three punches around to keep himself, you know, to keep himself in front and take that round just through making the other guy miss. And landing two or three of your own, I think that during the circumstances in the early rounds was enough for Fury to, to take those rounds. Um, but and then and then the rounds were going by. I think Wilder landed a decent right hand in the second, and as such, that was enough for, for him to to win that round on my card. But then you, there was, you know, we was going to five or six rounds after that without him landing a right hand at all. Um, and then it got to the stage where you know the knockdown occurred. And it was almost like, oh, well, that's typical Wilder. We've seen him do it against Ortiz, you know, probably behind on the scorecards. I can't remember officially, but he wasn't exactly dominating that fight and then brings it out the fire. Spilcott, he wasn't he wasn't running away with that fight. Um, brought that one not not out the fire, but, you know, a bit of a, 
a bit of an out of nowhere right hand. So it was it was looking like a typical bad performance. And then we got to the final two rounds. I thought how Fury got up from that, I still don't know now. Um, that would have a hundred percent been waved off in England, by the way. Hundred percent, no count, no count would have been administered in this country. Absolutely no way. Um, great refereeing, but like the first knockdown, Fury tried to casual it out, you know, like he did against Cunningham, and he sits there on his, you know, leaning on his elbow, kind of doing a pose. I thought, it, I thought he did that on the first knockdown. And on the second knockdown, I was wondering if he was trying to do that again. Obviously, he was flat on his back. So, visually, even if he has got a smile on his face, visually, that is... And he didn't have a smile on, the, on his face, by the way. But even if he did, visually to everyone else, the guy's flat on his back. He's took two massive punches. I think his head hit, hit the canvas as well. You know, for all, for all intents, he, he was a goner at that, that point. And for him to... For him to get on his feet and within a minute be putting his hands behind his back again um, and smiling at Wilder, I, I thought was amazing. Um, but at times, I was at times in the mid rounds before the first knockdown occurred, I was thinking to myself, "Are either of these, are either of these that that good really?" I know Fury was definitely boxing the better um, in terms of feints and you know stuff, technically better, but his lack of power, and not only his lack of power, his lack of um, willingness to use the power that he has got because I thought that Fury um, wobbled Wilder a little bit at the end of the first nothing nothing mad but I thought that he definitely registered a, a right hand and, and a left hook right towards the end of the first round and I thought well if Fury if Fury goes for it he's he's got the power to do it and he probably still has if Fury had have gone for it he probably still has got the power to take Wilder out but obviously you're risking what's going to come back um and yet, like I say, Wilder went rounds and rounds without landing the right hand. He was looking tired. He was looking sorry for himself. Um, the the first knockdown to me was almost a bit of a, a surprise. And I wouldn't call it a flash knockdown as such. There was punches landed, obviously, but um, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise out of nowhere. And then and then in the last round to to land that. I mean, it's probably the only flush right hand he landed all night, was it not? Um, and yeah, next thing you know, Fury's on the floor. Um, so really, on my card, um, I was only one round away from it being a draw anyway. So I'm I'm not going to co- claim about robbery. And for the second part of the question, probably a bit of both. I think Fury's chin's probably better than than Wilder's power. To be fair, he's been in with the two biggest punchers that we've probably seen this century in the in the heavyweight division, um, and is is survived is survived both of them. I, I would pick Fury in a rematch. To be honest, I think he'll be fitter and wiser and probably go for it a little bit more. He'll be obviously more settled in with his team and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I've just i been out tonight, so apologies. I'm in the car and that's on. You probably all covered what everything that I've said. But it was a great fight. Really enjoyed it. Good stuff, Smido. Uh, yeah, Tyson Fury rising from the dead uh, actually reminded me, strangely enough, of a, of a previous Adonis Stevenson fight way back. This is pretty niche stuff. In 2008, I remember watching it at the time against Anthony Bonsante. I brought up the Wikipedia um, entry here. They explain it better than I could. It says Stevenson scored a knockdown with a straight left to the head early in the opening round. Bonsante was motionless on the canvas for five seconds with his eyes closed, seemingly out of it. Simultaneously, referee Jerry Boland called off the bounce at the count of six, while Bonsante suddenly rose up, strong and alert. Bonsante protested to Boland about the stoppage, insisting he was entitled to a mandatory eight count. And this is where it becomes interesting. They shouted at each other for a short time, Boland ultimately choosing not to reverse his decision. Um, yeah, that was a strange one. He went down, Bonsante, like he'd been absolutely polaxed. And the referee saw him at the count of five or six, as they say, waves it off. You know, and then all of a sudden, Bonsante just bang, opens his eyes, jumps up. He was trying to obviously see some kidology, and he said, I'm entitled to the eight count. So that, you know, Fury was dicing with death a little bit there, wasn't he? Same thing. Same thing happened in uh, Danny Jacobs' only stoppage loss against Pirog. He was down. It looked like a hard knockdown. He looked like he was out. But he got up, and he, he was up, and he seemed energetic. I don't think that should have been waved off, considering what happened last night. So a case for giving them the count then, Dave, no matter what condition they're in, or maybe just keep assessing it as per basis? Yes, per basis. Yeah, like look at the eyes, see if he's like rigid and like going into seizures. You get, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not a doctor, so I'm just making this up sort of. But I mean, it's proof that there are cases, regardless of, of the indiv- of, of certain situations, there are some cases uh, that it is, it is best to not wave it off. 
it's a, it's a very tough one for the referees because obviously this is something that's crept in over the last say twenty years. Because if you look at even look at some of Roy Jones highlight videos where he pole axes fellas and their eyes are rolling in their heads and they're on like they're, you're clearly not getting up and the referee's still counting like. I remember like Harold Graham, Jesus Christ, Harold Graham and Julian Jackson, he got the full count like before he waved it off. And I was going to mention to you, Rob, do you remember Julian Jackson against Terry Norris? Norris looked like he'd been flipping annihilated and then all of a sudden he got up and he was, you know, he, I know he got counted out. Back and in, then... Yeah, he was, he was back up. Yeah, with his senses. But like, Reese, Reese to me is one of the underrated referees. I remember an Andrew Ward fight with Rodriguez where the two of them were being so dirty in the first yeah. half of the fight. A lot of it initiated by Rodriguez, but he took a point off each of them, and I cut it all out then for the rest of the fight. And he's another good one for the fighters that try to get up at the all nine count. Like, oh, I'm up, and he go, he asked him, "Do you want to continue?" <laughs> when they're at night, when you know when they're getting up on the half count, like, so he caught fellas out before when they go, "Ah, oh, no, no, I don't want to continue." I was only joking. I'm not. I'm out of this fight. But he's, you know what I mean? He's he's uh, definitely an astute referee. I'm a big fan of. Right? And look, maybe he. Had seen him get up already, and you know he's taken into consideration what Fiori's done already in the fight. He's only got a split second to make a decision, and I think you know every second counts in a, in situations where fighters are really hurt, like one more blow or whatever could be you know fatal. Like so, you know he 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 really took a gamble on his on his career last night, but it proved to be right because Fiori's back thirty seconds later, uh, winning the rest of the round. Like so, you know credit to Jack, huge credit to him last night for his performance. Right, boys, let's tidy up a few things. In episode 302 of the Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast, Dave the Hater Lowback is still with us. Smiddo's with us. Andy Patterson's with us. Gabe, Ozzy, and Rob Kelly at the moment. Let's get on then, uh, Dave. Quick comment from you on Adonis Stevenson. Talk about uh, talk about an L for me last week. I thought Stevenson would bang this guy out in about six rounds. It didn't happen. I'll tell you what, fair play to Gavosdik. He hung in there. I thought Stevenson was doing pretty well. That's how you finish someone. Gavosdik, youth was served, I think. Adonis gassed out. Gavosdik just laid the hammer down and the finish was absolutely brutal. Absolutely. And that's exactly the kind of step up we needed to see from Gavosdik at the time because he was in Canada uh, it had been a competitive fight. I had Gavazdik ahead, um, and even though he'd gotten, probably should have been dropped uh, as he flew against the ropes the previous round, um, I still thought that he had come, he had rallied and hurt Stevenson at the end of that round. So I thought he, things were looking pretty good for him. But I, you know, it's in it's in Canada. You go out there and you you put on a finish like that, and it was beautiful. And it, it was kind of awkward the way he went down. Um, his head snapped around. Um, obviously, since then things have uh, turned ugly. Um, I mean, I'm thrilled with the outcome. Ultimately, I'm thrilled that Stevens had lost and he's no longer the champion to just sit around and fight like fucking rematches with uh, shot to bits. Uh, Fara. He's not going to fight 168 pounders like uh, <sighs> what's that guy? Carpense. Tommy Carpense. Oh, that was bad too. Yeah, but there was the other one. Uh, Sakio Bika. Uh, <laughs> that was piss poor. Um, and Bika actually made it the distance. But, yeah, um, so I'm glad his reign is over. He deserved to get battered, uh, considering what he did to some young ladies in Canada. Um, and the judge only gave him, like, four years, which is, yeah, so <laughs> the people judges say... Judges again, eh, Dave? It's always the judges. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about the judges last night were shocking in that fight, man. Oh, yeah, Jack Woodburn had him way up. See that that's why it's good thing. Uh, good thing Vosdick. I get. I, we've been calling him Gavosdick for like months or years, but I think uh, all the commentators last night were calling him Vosdick. So the G is like silent. I don't know. Vosdick. We'll go with whatever you think, Dave. I'm gonna call him Vosdick because I don't like that G. Uh, mm. Yeah, I mean, real G. Real G's move in silence, like in lasagna and Vosdick. Um, I think Dave, that, carry on. it's a. It's big for. <laughs> maybe we can. Well. I mean, I, it, right now it looks like uh, Stevenson's career is definitely over. Um, it's, it's a philosophical tough position. I'm not going to say I hope he dies or anything like that. I, I, I do hope for the best for the sake of boxing alone. Um, but, you know, it, it's... Stop saying it, things and pretending you're not saying them. Say it, Dave. <laughs> no, it, no, Dave. no. I yeah, legitimately... Yeah, real here. No, no, no. I legitimately hope he pulls through. I, I hope that he... <laughs> I'm not going to hope he, he dies. Really in a bad way, then? No, seriously, speak. All seriously. It's nice to you. It's nice to you. I, I, I've not yeah. been following this on Twitter. Yeah, is from that what genuine? I've heard, yeah. From what I've heard, it's not as bad as some guys. Like, he's been placed into a coma just in case that he has oh, a brain. Oh, has he really? Right. But, yeah. Yeah, That's so bad, it's pretty yeah. bad, but it's Didn't not, know like, that. Didn't know that. Okay. I don't think the brain bleed is confirmed, but it's pretty bad. 
Uh, he was, uh, I think he collapsed in his dressing room. Um, so, he, I mean, I don't want him to die. No. no, um, no, 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 no. Well, as I say, I'm glad, I'm glad he lost, and I'm glad he, I'm glad, I'm glad he got busted up. But I, I, I don't want him to die. I, I don't want him to suffer further. I went, I went balls deep on it, right? And I dare say I'm going to cop some shit for the right. But in the end of the day, I'll, I'm going to say this. I, I agree with what Tommy said, right? The guy is a piece of shit, right? God works in mysterious ways. Right? I don't care if you believe them or not, right? But in the fucking day, what he did to those girls was absolutely fucking deplorable, disgusting. Right? And have guys like G. Leon Love come out and say lies, oh, he paid his dues and stuff like that and all that sort of stuff. I'm sorry, but there's, there's young lasses going out there about there just now who had their innocence stolen from them for whatever reason, so, so he could make some fucking money. Right? Okay, he might have recanted, paid his dues and all that sort of stuff, but at the end of the day, man, fucking... The big man's come up here and fucking, you know, really kind of paid him hard. You know, say I, I, I don't want him to die either. But and, and, and my thoughts go out to his fucking family and if he's got any children and that, that as well. But at the same fucking time, he's a piece of shit for what he done, right? And just, just remember some of the comments he threw at Kathy, Kathy Duva when we were trying to get that Sergey Kovalev fight made and stuff like. That. He was disrespectful to her as well. You know, he was, you know, dropping shit on Twitter and that as well. I remember some of the comments and stuff. But uh, on the fight itself, you know. That there was again there was a, there was an air of corruption there last night as well because he had a knock he got knocked down I think it was round three yeah what happened there I mean that was a clear knockdown from what I could a clear see. knockdown with the right hand that was, was so strange there was no tie up with the feet and anything like that and then as I say it's the scorecards Mike Ross ninety five ninety five good old Cavalieri I, I remember this name's come up before somewhere along the lines by the way ninety six ninety four okay you know Stevenson was landing a few shots he could have had a, a, a knockdown call for him. When Gvozdik, sorry, Gvozdik went into, uh, into the ropes. That and he should almost, have been a knockdown as well, yeah. Yep. He almost dropped him um, when the, he dipped the knees uh, of Vosdick, you know, and then he kind of grappled on. But the 98-92 scorecard by Jack Woodburn, that is, again, blatant corruption. You know, again, it's, it's clear Stevenson's been given the benefit of doing any close rounds there. Um, but in the end, you know, I thought Vosdick... It's kind of basic, you know what I mean? He's very straight with his shots. He's always shown the one-two, very, very straight, but he stuck to the game plan. He circled away for the left hand as much as possible. But, um, and he, he finished he the finished job. I was absolutely delighted to see Stevenson get knocked out there last night. Um, it's just, it's, it's really unfortunate, you know, what the situation is, his collapse or whatever and stuff like that. But let's not beat about the fucking bush. That guy is a piece of shit, right? And, you know, people kind of like, you know, revisionist history and all that sort of stuff, you know, people say the exact same thing about Gerald McClellan. Okay, you know, he, he fucking killed dogs and he ran over flamingos and he's fucking Cadillac and all that sort of stuff. Absolute piece of shit. As I say, you know, I, I'm a father of a fucking young lassie, right? And I would fucking hate to have a fucking prick like that to get her, get his hands on, her, on, on my daughter and fucking pimp her out and do whatever he fucking did to these girls and stuff like that. It's fucking disgusting what he did. I don't give a fuck if he paid his dues or no, but he's paying his dues right now. His career's over and that's all we can say about it. Um, as I said, you want to give me a shit about it, then come ahead. I'll fucking happily take the shit on the chin. But what he did, what he did, it was fucking disgusting. Okay, You're, it's very hard to argue with Andy, honestly. And he, d he did not seem like a guy who had repented over the last couple of years. He seemed like a guy who was just happy to be out of jail rather than a guy who was remorseful. Ironically, though, Tony Bellew's comments on this. Um, Tony's kind of a guy for a black and white. Uh, Medieval justice. However, his he says has said after all of that, my thoughts are with Adonis Stevenson right now, who is in critical condition in hospital. I hope he comes through okay. Prayer hands emoji. Oh, we had is a comment. We had a comment in from Niall actually, Rob, which was which was a bit rough. But Niall O'Connor jumps in. He says, "Now that Adonis has been cabbaged, how long till Eddie Hearn tries to make the belt a huge rematch?" Just, he just took the words out of my mouth, and I said, "I better not say that one." I was just like, oh, no, I said it for you. It must be the Irish thing or something. The, uh, Irish minds think alike or something because I was just about to say it and I was like, no, hold off, Kelly. That's a bit much. Like, no, but it's hard. Like, again, it's hard to show empathy to Adonis, like, especially, you know, we kind of forgotten about that a lot of it. Well, not, some of us never forgot, but it kind of goes out of the, 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 the narrative when you're talking about Adonis Stevenson. Like, and it's a kind of polarizing one because, you know, Mike is so, is so, revered and obviously people have their thoughts on on his case whether he was guilty or not but I think it's been said more than once that if he wasn't guilty of that he might have been guilty of something else you know what I mean and he's still kind of revered and he's not treated the same way so it's kind of polarizing but this, the stories about Adonis are brutal 
and I echo what Andy said as well, like having a little one. But as they say in the States, like a real pimp can pimp with his hands in his pockets, you know what I mean? So it makes him even worse, like, for the stuff that he did. So, look, I don't, I don't want to wish bad health on anyone. That's not up for me to, to make a call on. Like, um, it was a pretty shocking uh, knockout. And he he may end up in a, in a very bad way. So I think kind of less said about uh, less said about it from from my point of view. At that is the better. Uh, just but I'd echo what the lads say. It's very hard to get, show empathy to a guy like that. Like. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, yeah, I know the fans are going to be screaming for us to go on to match room Italy. Uh, I'll be coming to you soon, uh, Aussie, on that plus the Friday night card as well. I know you're a sucker for all that type of stuff like me, Gabe. Let's uh, close out as well on Adonis. Uh, more to the point, uh, Gavostik, I suppose we have to look at the winner. Top rank didn't really give him the big push, did they? You know, Bob Arum turned up at ringside, but their social media wasn't really pushing him that much. I suppose it wasn't a PBC show or, you know, an, an, an opposite uh, rival promoter's show. But anyway, let's, let's look at Gavostik because you were mentioning something the other week, Gabe, going on about HBO, obviously looking to the likes of Triple G, Kovalev, Lomachenko. And I wonder if some of these Eastern European guys, Gabe, have maybe been pushed on quickly, you know, in uh, Behind the likes of your Triple Gs and that, you've had Lippinett's been thrown in pretty quickly, Baranchik was thrown in, Usyk, it was really sink or swim for him. You know, and sometimes guys like Bivol, we watched last week, maybe aren't ready to be pushed along. But because that's what they're doing in America with these Eastern European fighters, they're getting thrown into these fights. Bivol hasn't impressed in his last couple of fights because I think he maybe isn't quite ready for the consistent step up in levels, despite his talents. Gavosdik was thrown in against Stevenson in what is... 15th, 16th fight, which is comparatively early compared to some of the American prospects who are, are kept, you know, um, kept on to 20 and 0, 30 and 0 at times. I hope you see the point I'm making, Gabe. Gavosdik thrown in, and this one came off. Yeah, it did. I think I do think part of it was a cash in on some of those guys. Um, you've got a guy like Bob Arum that's signing some some of these guys, and you know. It's it's kind of strange to me because before this rash of of these guys that are being brought over, uh, I don't really recall a whole lot of those guys coming here to the states to to be built up to be to be big names um, or to be brought over to see what they can do. You know, maybe that's just my memory is is kind of fading a little bit on some of that stuff. But it just seems like it's a little bit. Um, it's a little bit out there. Uh, I do think they were brought along quickly. I think they wanted to try to develop them quickly for HBO so that they could have a new star. Um, you know, I think it's just unorganic the way that they've tried to do all that shit. Uh, it, it was very much a, a forced approach because, like you said, they were throwing those guys in with with competitive competition. Excuse me, that they. Um, really maybe weren't quite ready for. And so they didn't end up looking as good as they may look later on down the line that they had proper time to develop in terms of, of taking it a little bit slower, like they will with maybe a, a, a really young prized, um, prized fighter, you know, someone who they expect to be the goods later on. Uh, sometimes they'll take them on a little bit slowly it really it's it's you never really know how it's going to shake out because you have guys that you'll you'll bring in that are you know maybe they're older and you throw them right in and see what they can do and you have younger guys that want to push it along quickly and they maybe go a little bit too quick um there's one that I'm thinking of he was a golden boy fighter uh he lost to Gary Russell um uh, Diaz yeah, it was Jojo Diaz. Yeah. You know, that guy, regardless of what you think about how skilled or not that he was, I think if he had taken a little bit more time to develop, he had a lot of fights really rapidly. And then he went in with a guy like Gary Russell, and it didn't work out for him. But he had the number of fights you might like to see, but they were all really rapid, um, pretty, pretty quick, back to back to back. And he moved along really quickly. And so I think sometimes you see the same with some of these guys. They just don't look as impressive. And so the fans don't buy in immediately. Um, it's like they try to do with these with these European guys like they did with Pacquiao. They brought him over for a fight, and then he amazed everyone. And, like, they want to try to do the same thing, but they're just not ready yet. They're not ready for it. 
and it's it's kind of like uh, taking a pie out of the oven. It just ain't going to be as good, you know. It ain't going to look as good. It ain't going to taste as good. And that's the way these guys are, are. And I think that contributed to some of the failure of HBO. Um, every once in a while, you'll get a, a situation like last night where, you know, I don't know that that Vosdick is going to be a a world beater. I, I still don't see it. I'm still not in love with what he does. That doesn't mean that he's not going to be good. But I, I, I personally um, – don't necessarily enjoy watching much of his fights. So for me, and then there's going to be other people that feel the same way. Mm. When you try to bring these guys in, it's just not going to do anything for them. And so you're really going to be kind of building something that's hollow anyway. Um, of course, you're going to have a certain contingency of fans that are going to like these guys. You know, the ones that are crowing for Triple G already to start off with. Um, you get the 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 maybe native Ukrainians that have moved here or moved wherever that are going to be a built in part of that fan base. But it just, it, to me, it seems rushed and it seems manufactured. And when things don't seem legitimate, you're not going to fool a, a fucking boxing fan with that shit. You know, um, fans of boxing are smart. The real fans of boxing are intelligent people to the sport. They know what's going on. You can't fool them all the time. You may be able to pull the wool over their eyes for a little bit, but you're never going to fool us completely because eventually we're going to catch on to it. We're going to see it. Uh, Andre Berto was a great example. HBO was paying him shit tons of money to fight nobodies and to look good. And then when he started stepping up a little bit, he got beat the fuck down. And I feel like that's a similar scenario to what happened here. Like, even if he wouldn't have gotten beat, people were starting to kind of see some chinks in the armor, so to speak. And so I, th- I feel like it's a similar scenario here. You're just not going to fool everyone. And again, I'm not saying I, I, Vosdick's not going to be great. Time will tell. But it just will turn certain people off to certain things because they haven't been impressed before. I'm much less likely to view a fight of Sergio Mora than I am of, um, I don't know. It really, uh, you can put any other fighter that I like in there. Yeah. Um, I- anyway, whomever. Because I haven't been invested in him. I don't care about him. I don't like what he does. He's not entertaining to me. And there's been a history of that. And so it's going to be the same thing. Like, I haven't enjoyed anything that Vosdick's really done until last night. And so even still at this point, it's a minimal investment for me to make. If there's nothing else on, yeah, I'll tune in. But I was much more um, pleasantly sitting back waiting for this to happen, for the for the big uh, the big Fury card to start, watching the pre-fight hop that was on on my television, you know, um, just because I'd seen Fosdick before. I'm not invested. So I forget what your, your original question was. I think I got way off track here. Um, Need to leave a trail of breadcrumbs, Gabe, before you went off on that path? Yeah, I think so, because I, I got too far off on it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like what they what they did with trying to bring all these guys in. Um, but it was an impressive performance. I guess I'll go there with it and, and give my thoughts on what I saw afterwards. Um, it was impressive. And Buzzick has some potential, and I think he'll do some good things. Like I said, I'm just not fully invested in the guy yet. Yep, Gabe's not fully invested yet. I think on paper, Gavosdick Stevenson was a good fight to be made and it turned out to be a pretty decent scrap. Thanks to Gabe. Andy's with us on the call as well. We've also got Hey to Dave coming to you soon, Rob Kelly. Uh, Smido coming to you soon on the build-up to the BT cards of Wilder Fury. Toby Hines has got a question for you. Stay tuned. Also, Donny got a bit of Kel Brook coming your way, so don't get running off too quickly. Ozzy, before we do so, let's wrap up the bits and pieces on Friday night, not so much the performances of the respective protagonists on each of the Matrim Italy card and the Scotland MTK card, but about the movers and shakers, really, I suppose, Donny, where um, as Ozzy, sorry, where they go from here. Joe Hughes getting a good away win, split decision against Andrea Scarpa for the European title. Devis Bashiero lost to Martin J. Ward. Fabio Turchi knocked out the return in Tony Conquest. And over in Scotland, the show that I actually watched, Okashir Farouk winning the British title against Ian Butcher. Lewis Benson lost to Toro McKenna. And a decent scrap, actually, between unbeaten Kieran Smith and Evaldas Korsakas. Uh, Kevin McIntyre as well, training as a judge, former British 
light welterweight champion, I think it was. Lost to Kel Brook in a round, actually. He's training as a referee now. Uh, yeah, uh, anything for Matri Italy or Glasgow on Friday night where, where these guys might be going, Ozzy? Uh, I'll start in Italy. Um, I, I, watch, I landed, Obviously, I landed back on Friday night, so I didn't watch it then. Watched it on Saturday, I think, before, just while it was on in the evening. And I, I mean, I, I don't get why the go in there i mean there must have been about 500 people there the card itself was just i mean tony fucking conquest headlining a show i mean i think he'll pack it in now good win for joe hughes uh, i like this lad he, he's done it the hard way he's a prime example of how he's had no backing from any promoter whatsoever only opportunity to get so when he's in the away corner and he's gone away and, and like I said, he's the European champion now. And he, and he has a physical impairment as well. I mean, you know, yeah, he, doing it the hard way. I, yeah, I think I think his right arm is shorter than his left arm. I forget the uh the the uh like the disability he's got, but I mean when he was born he was told that he wouldn't really be able to walk. Never mind compete professionally as a a boxer. Uh, and he's not bad as well, you know. He, he's pretty decent. Um and naturally, a European title now will, will open up some good opportunities for him. So, fair play to him. Uh, Martin Ward, um, decent enough fight with Boschiero, actually. We, we've seen him before. I think he lost to Stephen Smith in the end. What Ward boxed well at times. Uh, I thought the cards, took a couple of the cards were... Uh, well, the one that was to Boschiero was wrong. And I thought the 115, 113 to Ward as well was a bit close as well. Uh, but a fair enough, a decent win. That Turchi, I mean, yeah, he knocked out Tony Conquest, but Conquest didn't really do anything. Uh, I don't know. It's I don't really know why Matchroom have gone to Italy. It's a really strange, strange place. Selling the project on Tony Conquest returning as well. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what. This is what I mean. It, it's just really weird. What what a random show. And then over in uh, Scotland, that I like that uh, that Cash Farouk. He's decent. Him, I, I really like him. Does Cyclone have a? Is it Lee McGregor who's at bantamweight? Is that is that who it is? Yeah, yeah, he's, yes, a, he's, he's with Cyclone. Yeah. 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 I, I would I would like to see that fight. I think, I, I think even Lee McGregor actually mentioned it on Twitter and that you know this something along the lines of we need to get this fight made or you know we'll see who the best is so to speak. Yeah, that, that was his first defence against Ian Butcher. I mean, I'm not really high on Butcher. I mean, I've, I've seen him before and he's okay, but Farouk really dominated him and I was impressed. So I think that would be a good fight, that. Uh, he wants to win the British title outright as well. So I'm sure McGregor, um, I can't remember if he boxed an eliminator for it. So hopefully that gets made because there's no reason why it can't. Uh, Lewis Benson was robbed against Tyrone McKenna. Uh, I had Benson winning the fight by three rounds. Not sure how McKenna got it. Weird one, McKenna. Doesn't utilise his skills. Big, tall lad. Decent range. Can clearly box and just loves to get into a bit of a war. And he, he was caught regularly. Uh, and, for, and for me, he didn't do enough to win the fight. He he got one on the cards. Uh, well, the referee scored the fight. And uh, Kieran Smith and Ivaldas Corsacas. Uh, Corsacas, I think he's managed by Steve Wood still. He was a last-minute replacement for this fight, and that was a good scrap. That really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Kotsakis is another one. I think he came over from uh, Lithuania originally. Uh, originally uh, decided to go on the road. Was probably a bit too good to you know to go on the road. You know to be a you know one of these journeymen because he was he's got a decent style and he can he can clearly fight as well. I like him. Beat Vassell, didn't he? Did yeah. He stopped Denton Vassell, and I think uh, relatively early. I think a couple of rounds. Um, good fight, good fight. It would have been interesting to see if he'd have had a, a longer camp as well. Because, like I said, it was relatively close. Uh, I didn't see the rest of the undercard, but I saw David Brophy was against that Charles Adamu. I can't believe Adamu's still going. Oh, I'm not, I watched him against who was he against? Carl Froch in 2002. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was on recently, and I mean, he looked all over the place. Adamu, no balance, nothing, or anything. He looked fucked. So, I mean, God knows how he's still going now. He's just clearly getting a few quid in the bank, isn't he, before he packs it in. But, oh, my, Brophy was a light heavyweight for that. <sighs> Surprised me. Uh, anyway, no, but, I mean, they're okay, these MTK cards, aren't they? I mean, it's a shame because they put the fights on and they keep collapsing at the moment. P 
people keep withdrawing. So, fingers crossed they get a bit of luck because they're doing the right thing. They're matching all the lads together and considering they probably own 75% of British boxing with either management or like promotional deals, it makes sense to get all their lads in together, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It definitely does, exactly. If you're going to own them all, at least put them in against each other. I completely agree with that. Uh, right, Andy, uh, Yeah, before we go to Donny and look to the things next week and then move on to a, a quite stacked value of the week portion, let's go to Australia on Friday Ooh. night. Only $60 for this for this pay-per-view. Anthony Mundine, the heaviest knockout in his career since uh, Hands of Stone, Sven Ocker smashed him in. Oh God, what would it have been about 2001, something like that? <laughs> yeah, that was a while ago, eh? still going. Uh, some people are <clears> saying the fix was in. Maybe the greatest Australian quick job since... We've had a few, haven't we? Last fight wonders. Bob Mirovich quitting against Matt Skelton. Uh, Paul Briggs going out with a phantom punch Whoa. against Paddy Green. Was this another phantom punch <laughs> incident, Andy? Um... I say that at the time, probably it was. I'm, I, I, I'm an absolute mundane hater, but... Um, I just think maybe his punch resistance is absolutely short. I mean, he's been, you know, how many fights he's had? He's had well over 50 fights. Um, 56. 56 fights. I mean, quite a few of those have been knockouts as well, some of the, those defeats that he's had in that as well. I remember like, the guy, Gareth, Gareth something. Um, Garth Wood. Gareth Wood. I think he knocked him out in something like four rounds or something He'd like that. He'd lost the first fight, hadn't he, to Wood? I think. Aye. Uh, and you say, like, I mean, I remember Michael Kessler pounded, I mean, I'm a big Kessler fan, people know us, Kessler went over there and fucking pounded on him Schooled for 12 him. rounds. Schooled him. him. Pounded him. I mean, I swear to God, it was, a, it was, a, it was as much a beat down, but Kessler at that point was 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 at his peak and he was jabbing and right-handing him. He just absolutely kind of handed him an ass beating. I think, I think, part of me thinks it was maybe a, a dive job, but I think if you look at it in the absolute slow motion, you can see the eyes just literally glaze over as soon as the, the left hook lands. Um, just it was just what can you say? It's just nonsense. I mean, I, I really don't know if it's maybe part to do with the fact that he's fluctuated quite a fair bit between weights. That he's been he's been fighting between welterweight and light middleweight, but up as high yeah. as cruiser weight, coming back down in weight. I mean, he was up there. It was last year. He was up at one seventy five, and he came back down to one sixty, and he was at one fifty five catch weight there and stuff. I just, I just think he's just got old, and you know. Probably in the cold light a day after reviewing it again and stuff like that. I think maybe the, the left hook was probably legit and you know that's it. So, you know, he's he's I mean, I suppose I mean we can shit on, but his career's been I suppose because he's decent. Andy, I suppose. This is what I was gonna say, you know what I mean? as much as people hate him, I know he's a bit of a pariah and he's made controversial comments over the years, but considering this is a guy who's come from a completely different sport, from like what was it, rugby league or something, over to boxing. I mean, looking down his record here, two thousand and nine took the unbeaten record twenty one and zero of Daniel Gill, who obviously fought at the highest level, beat Nadia oh, Hamdan, that? that's a good win. You know, school Danny Green. A lot of people really wanted Green to shut him up and knock him out. And Mundane, he didn't just beat him, he took him to school. You know, he was a world champion. I know probably not a proper world champion because of all these WBA belts going about. There's another win on his record as well, which I was going to point to, and I can't remember what it was now off the top of my head. I'm but so oh, the, the Otka one, Andy, the Otka one. I mean, I know he got knocked out by Otka, but Otka was a reigning champion, 40 odd defences unbeaten. And Mundine was taking him to school before Otka did something that he never did in the rest of his career and knocked him out you know this guy has made a hell of a lot of money he had skills he came from another sport like him or hate him outside of the ring I think Mundine's had a damn fine career to be honest with you He's had a, a good career. Um, so the only thing is, I mean, you look at Sven Otka, Sven Otka, he, he couldn't crack an egg, man. He, he, he can't punch. But I think it, it says a lot from Mundine's pool, actually, because I think I'm right in saying, since he, when he turned pro, every one of his fights, pretty much, was pay-per-view. So, clearly, he was he was a big, big star. You know, I think he took something like $500,000 for his first professional fight. I mean, that's unheard of for a professional fight unless you're like a heavyweight, for example. But, you know, if, I just pulled up his record there, right? His record in, in world title fights was 7-4 and four with two knockouts. And he went 8-5 and five with four KOs against current or former world titleists, you know? So, and Joshua Clotty put a beat down on him. I think he knocked him down like four or five times and stuff. He was always chinny, wasn't he? Because you remember the likes of Yoshinori Nishizawa? He knocked him down, didn't he? He was always chinny. Don't yep. forget Darth Wood. The great yeah. Darth Wood. I, I, mentioned, I mentioned that one there, I And um, I just, again, as, as I say, is, you know, I just think he got, he got old, you know, he was all he was done and passed it way, way before this. By the way, I mean, Chris, I, I think maybe he's maybe the, the 
the the, the back end of his, of his peak or his, his prime or whatever his career was left, and that was probably the Daniel Gill defeat when he claimed that he'd actually he'd won the fight. I, I would say that, you know, I, I would say the Gareth Wood defeat was, was an absolute freak of nature. I would probably say that because he did come back and he, he won the rematch. Um, he, he knocked Wood down, I think, in a, a, few, a few of those rounds and stuff. But I just think, you know, after, after the Daniel Gill rematch in 2013, I think it was, um, that, that was the end of him. But he kept going on for, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, another eight more fights, you know, and then the end is it's just it's just like everything else, isn't it? It's just like a fighter's got too old, and then the end is you have to get you had to get knocked out of the sport and punched out of the sport, and then the end will say enough's enough. But uh, no, as he says, you know, we, we can shit on him all we want. You know, he has been a bit of pricking uh, at times and stuff. But he has he has fought for Aboriginal rights, which is an issue in Australia. I've got family out there. Um, as an issue, so there is a, you know, a bit of racism as well involved in that that type of thing. So I've, <laughs> there's I've, a lot of racism. Yeah. So I've I've got to probably say I've got to kind of like say you know, applaud them for you know, standing up for Aboriginal rights and stuff. And um, but end of the day, um, a decent career, but you know, as what it is, he's not going to be he's not going to be a Hall of Famer and all that type of stuff. But no, but considering you know, comparatively, I think yeah, decent, I think decent so. career. I think so. Yeah. As hated Dave would say, "Well done, Chuck, mate." Great job. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Saturday the 8th of December, going into next week's fights now. The HBO is out of boxing. World Tour continues with Cecilia Brakus against Alexandra Lopez. HBO are televising this. This is the greatest end to uh, boxing, I think, that there's ever been from HBO. They keep on going for some reason. I mean, I thought they were out of this sport, but here they are showing this fight. Clarissa Shields as well against Femke Hermans. This is bound to be a great one, isn't it? HBO, man, they're going like free sports TV at the moment. Anyway, let's move on. Let's not get That's bogged down. Hate, that. That real hate. <laughs> it is though, isn't it? I thought, I thought, Dave. I thought they were supposed to be out of boxing. I mean, what's going on? Well, uh, they they were the uh, broadcasters in the movie Creed Two. Uh, I know that was probably shot a while ago, but <laughs> maybe they what's that got to do with the... anything? They hung a bit oh, long they... enough to get that out there, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> There's the I gold mean, stand. Well, see, see the other thing. Well, they, they, they're, they're going to bring out another. They're going to bring out an Ali documentary. I mean, fucking a Muhammad Ali doc. I've got eight Ali documentaries on my hard drive. How many more fucking documentaries do we need on Ali? We fucking know everything we need to know about the man. For fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the HBO getting out of boxing is like you know when the Eagles do one of those farewell tours. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out to boxing, but you can never leave, Donny. <laughs> Shit got bad with Ali documentaries when they made a documentary based on secret telephone calls exactly. that he used to record. Like, fuck me. Aye. Like, You know what Aye. I mean? Like, how much more... Yeah, you're dead right. Like, how much more of a deep dive can you do with Ali? Like, I mean, I, I remember they've, they've you find made out like he was a... They even made a film about the about the, the Supreme Court case when when they finally got his license back. They made a film on that with Danny Glover for Lethal Weapon, in it. <laughs> Seriously, I've got a copy of it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They even like have people not seen the greatest? Not seen the greatest movie of all time. Can't talk about boxing movies. What a performance! Playing himself in the greatest. Sonny Liston is the guy that used to be in Magnum PI. Uh, <laughs> lets off the gun in one of the scenes, and I saw someone on Twitter think. Did that, that was Liston shooting the gun <laughs> Muhammad Ali so <laughs> well there you go they're showing this breakers fight anyway so but let's move on and uh, finish up these last points uh, yeah Donny we're coming to you on Kel Brook Toby Hines was in touch actually I wanted to give this question to Smido or comment but smido has gone so a little side note thought for the pod says Toby Hines how refreshing has it been watching the build up to a real fight he's talking about Wilder Fury with real boxing characters giving honest thoughts on the YouTube channels listening to Bo, Spinks, Holyfield, Lewis, Roach, Hatton, Andy Lee, and a dozen other names talking boxing, rather than the likes of the company man, Johnny, and the other fucking arsehole shills like Macklin, Bellew, Hay, etc., all towing the company line and talking bullshit to sell an event. Nice, uh, not... Nice to not listen to that cunt hern for a week as well, says Toby Hines. So, yeah, I can endorse that. He's yep. been enjoying the pre-fight build-up. Andy, fair, fair comment from Toby. Some real oh, boxing chat. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely, mate. I even had uh, one, John Evans even flagged somebody up as well for Billy the Decade for his comments for saying, why they feel out these people and that. These people need to remember, these guys were peeled out decades ago. I mean, great fighters. Absolutely, you know, brought out to, like, say, introduce themselves and shake hands with the, the combatants before fights started and stuff like that. So this is nothing new. You know, but aye, Toby's bang on the money there. 
Well done, Toby. Right, uh, Donny in Sheffield next week. This is a bit of a strange card. Anthony Fowler is still waiting for an opponent. Josh Kelly against David Avanessi, and he's a decent fight, actually. I'll give the matchmaker uh, Paul Reddy his credit for that one. John O'Carroll against Guillaume Frenoir. 46-1 and one is Mr. Frenoir. That should be a pretty decent fight with the winner, which we expect to be Carroll, going on to fight uh, Tevin Farmer for the IBF title. But what about the main event, Donny? I know you're a big Amir Khan fan. His, his sparring partner, I suppose verbal sparring partner, Kel Brook, is in action against Michael Zarafa. This is a truly bizarre card, a, a main event. Sorry, Donny. Zarafa, you know, Eddie was there trying to sell it recently by saying Zarafa was the man. Go and look at his knockout loss to oh. Peter Quillin. Why on earth is Kel Brook fighting Michael Zarafa, Donny? I, I just cannot Z- get Zarafa, wasn't he the guy that uh, he moonlighted as a male stripper or something? <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was when it quite cl- almost killed in one round. Could be your answer there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and you're right. And, and Quillen almost fucking like... Yeah. Like, Are we having our pants pulled down by this one, Donny, do you think? Well, remember Eddie Hearn actually said, look at the Peter <laughs> Quillen fight. Trying to sell this. He said, well, look at the Peter Quillen fight. Why would you think that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he would be making reference to the fact the guy that I've blown out in one round. That's, that's fucking crazy. Um... But uh, but anyways, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, the the dude, obviously, well, the thing is, is that I think when when Quillen fought him, they dragged him up from 154 um, and Quillen was already pretty huge for 160. So, I mean, you know, he looked like a much tinier man in there and he, you know, he got he got blasted away. Uh, and so, uh, you know, coming back down to his natural weight, he might look a little bit better. But that being said, I mean, you know, whatever you think of Kel Brook, he's obviously light years a ahead of him in, ter- in terms of skill uh, and in terms of the competition that he's been in with. So, um, I mean, I imagine that Kel, you know, just basically be trying to do an audition for the, you know, uh, forever in the future Amir Khan fight. Maybe it'll finally happen. Who knows? But but I think he'll just be trying to look good and uh, score a big knockout in front of his uh, hometown fans uh, in order to, uh, you know, build more demand for that fight. Um, so... I think that's all they can. That's all they can do, and that's that's all that'll happen. No interest in Donny then, right? Let's move on. I'm not going to spend any more time on this shite. To people saying that Kel Brook is the number one 154 fighter in the world is just oh, I'm not even going to dignify that. Right, Madison Square Garden Theatre. I'll open this to the floor to anybody who wants to talk about it. We're going to give it a couple of minutes max though because of our time restraints. Vasily Lomachenko. This one's crept up on me. Me and Ozzy were looking before the pod yeah. started actually about fights. Sandy, you can jump in first. That were coming up next week, and I forgot this was even on against Pedraza. I'm not. I'm not averse to it, to be honest with you, because, of Loma, like I said before, Lomachenko's keep busy fights are against world champions, so you can't really fault him for that. Isaac Dogbo on the undercard, we always love a bit of him. Tiafimo Lopez, decent fight against Mason Menard. Menard is an exciting fighter, but he fights with his chin first. He will get knocked out uh, with a highlight reel knockout. Top rank have done this on purpose, made that fight. They know exactly what they're doing. Tell me about Lomachenko Pajaza, Andy. It's going to be um, <laughs> it's going to be pretty from a Lomachenko point of view, I suppose, but not so much from Pajaza. Yeah, well, he's just wondering what kind of, you know, how I dare say Loma's going to work on a few things. As, you know, he's coming off surgery, for example. You know, Pedraza, okay, he, he looked, he, well, I put it this way, he stuck to the game plan against Beltran, but we all kind of agreed that Beltran was probably faded and past his, well past his best by that point. But it was a good win for him. Um, it sets up this this opportunity, and that's what it is. You know, we, we spoke about, uh, well, Ozzy spoke about Jason Wellborn last night, and that, you know, he gave it the best he could. Um, I, I hope and expect they'll, uh, Pedraza to do the same, um, but yet you, you think in the end, you know, Lomachenko is just like, what, even a level above, we're talking like fucking skyscraper levels above Pedraza and levels of terms of quality and boxing IQ. Um, Tiafimo Lopez, that name again rings, rings a bell. I think I was quite impressed with him in one of his fights and I forget who it was, but... Um, he fought William Silver recently, didn't he? Who'd boxed who it was. against Bideo, yeah. All right. Um, and obviously, you know, it, He's no Amo Isaac dog boat training mm-hmm. that. I, just, I don't know if anybody listened to the five, what, uh, five, uh, sorry, Radio Five Live podcast with Mike Costello. We had an interview with Isaac dog boat. I actually heard some interesting information. After this fight, Isaac dog boat will have paid back all his debts that he's, well, his dad will have paid back all the money that he'd actually uh, loaned from people in order to kind of uh, boost his career. Uh, 
you know, obviously kind of like get him into like amateur events and stuff like that. So I, I, I don't know how much money we're talking about here, but he's, he said that his dad had loaned money from people, and after this fight, uh, all that money will be will have been paid back, and then he can start making money for himself and stuff like that. So I thought it was a really good story actually. So you know, it just shows that his his dad. You know, well, it's an African way, I think. Uh, thinking, I suppose, that, you know, that parents really put everything in, in it, their kids, like education, sports, and all that type of thing. And it seems to have paid off for them. So uh, that's, that's a really good, good news story. So obviously, Dogbo, I want to win. Uh, I'm on that on that hype train, and I want to see some of the unification fights to me. So I, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see, to seeing Dogbo back in action again and stuff. And um, Again, I expect and hope Lomachenko is going to win this fight by stoppage. Now, because again, as I say, it's, it's levels above in anything we're, we're going to see. So, and again, as well, we're, we're going to get some of the titles unified in that as well. So that's that's probably one of the biggest pluses out of this fight as well. Right. If anybody wants to say anything about Lomachenko, um, unmute yourselves now, and I'll try and sort you out in order. Dave, uh, this is some shit that. The which I, I don't know is the WBA. They've mandated it was announced this week, and Eddie Hearn was all proud about it that they've mandated Anthony Krola be the next man to face Lemachenko if uh, if he comes through this very tough test. Uh, this is some shit. Um, I think he should just throw the belt right in the bin if that like that is not worth it at all. Okay, glowing endorsement from Dave Gabe. You got anything to say about this Lemachenko Pedraza fight? Uh, I'm actually thinking it might be a little bit interesting for a little bit. Pedraza has a good reach and height advantage. And so, or well, at least I, I, I believe he does. I haven't checked the official stats, but just going off memory, he should be a little bit taller, have a little bit more reach. Uh, he's a pretty basic guy. So I don't really think that Lomachenko is going to <clears throat> have have too much trouble with him. But I think there could be some interesting moments where we see um, – some some chance for Pedraza to keep him at bay if he if he can land a good jab. Now that's going to be the trick though, because of that head movement and that uh, footwork of Lomachenko. But I think it's going to be a little bit interesting and fun to watch for a little bit. Um, of course, it'll be fun to watch because in the end he's going to get to Pedraza and put him put him down. Um, but I think that'll be good. And uh, the other comment that I have was uh, also fuck Eddie Hearn and the WBA. WBA. And uh, Gay J as well, one more time. Oh, that's not very nice, Gabe. Oh, well, I guess I'm not a fucking nice person. <laughs> War Gabe. <laughs> guess not. I'm, I'm, this, is, this is my new battle cry. So if there's going to be any comments to get made, that's what it's going to be. Eddie Hearn, AJ, Alabama. Anybody else getting it from Gabe tonight? Goodness knows. No, not, no not necessarily Alabama. I mean, they did for a minute the Alabama football team, but but not the state as a whole. I don't have anything against that. The whole state of Alabama or the people there, just the fucking football team. Okay, Gabe, thank you. Well, let's get on to the belly of the weeks, and then we shall finish up. We're doing okay for time tonight. Thank you for sticking with us, everybody, and listening belatedly. Not live, not live, <laughs> not live. <laughs> right? Wait, uh, my... wait, we're not live. <laughs> <laughs> Right, boys, value of the week. So let's get on with it, shall we? Match in boxing. Josh Kelly says, I'm down for a rematch with uh, Danny R. Yelusinov. Obviously, they fought as amateurs. Scott jumps in. Your level's above Yelusinov. <laughs> Josh Fitzgerald nominates him for that one. Chad Hogan has nominated Sam from Fight Talk. The Fight Talk podcast Christmas special this year will be in the Bassett and Hair tattoo shop. We'll be recording a pod, having some laughs, some beers, etc. Sounds pretty good, actually. Chad's not too impressed, though. Andy has nominated David Sparks for... Uh, utter feast of delusion. There's a lot drinking from the fountain of delusion, Andy, at the moment, isn't there? It's uh, it's plentiful. Pull up, pull up a bar stool. Oh man, I, I think the other one was the, the goblet of delusion I'm drinking from as well. It's, 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 it's as you say, it's amazing what's happening these days. And that. I mean, I, they couldn't wait to get on Tyson Fury last night. These AGA fans and Matchroom FC lovers and that, but it's just just let the guy have his moment for fuck's sake. Well said, Andy. Well said. Uh, Andy Scott has uh, thrown down the gauntlet to us, boys. If this isn't belly of the week, I'm nominating the whole pod for not agreeing. I sent a message back to him saying, stay humble. Stay humble, Andy. There's plenty uh, There's plenty going on here. Anyway, he's nominating Harley Richards. It is a pretty good one. Harley Richards says, I'm sure it's interesting to see who will win. He's talking about Fury Wilder, but I'm just not hyped about it. The pantomime, the theoretics. 
don't know what that means, etc. More interested in other fights, says Harley. What type of fights is he interested in, guys? Dillian White against Derek Chisora for a start. Anthony Fowler <laughs> having a title shot. Anthony <laughs> Fowler having a title shot is more oh, interesting to Harley Richards oh than Fury against Wilder. Maybe Anthony Crawler versus Lomachenko. Real excitement, exclamation mark. Is he fighting next week, Fowler? <laughs> yeah, against TB- TBA. TBE. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? That's a that's a that, that's a matchroom bot account right there. <laughs> Harley Richards zero. Well, he's t- uh, t- yeah, pretty much, pretty much uh, Harley Richards L. It should be, I think. But there you go. Anyway, Andy Scott has laid down the gauntlet. That's going to be hard to beat. Michael Benson says uh, no. Michael Benson is tweeting about Kell Brook actually. Kell Brook says he feels reborn under new trainer John Fuchs and he's targeting multiple fights down at welterweight. John O'Donovan mentioned that one. Yeah, John Fuchs. I remember him actually as a fighter, the Fireball. He was, he was an exciting fighter from Sheffield back in the day. Um, what have we got here? Uh, Fergie has nominated Derry Matthews, talking about Tony Bellew. Build a statue, what he's done for boxing in this city. No one will ever do, says Derry. How long have I been saying this for, mate? There you go, build a statue. Uh, Andrew G, another one to nominate Harley Richards, saying he'd rather see Anthony Fowler have a title shot than watch Wilder against Fury. Ian, Darren Neal have also nominated him. Loads of people coming in here. Women's Music has nominated Lee Ali. We're talking about the World Boxing Super Series here. Final steps in setting up the masterpiece for early 2019, says Kala. Uh, and Lee jumps in and says, Inoue versus Taylor. What a final that would be. <laughs> Hashtag Ali trophy. So now you're Inoue against Josh Taylor. That would be a good final, wouldn't it? I suppose, Andy, you know. That would, that would uh, that'd be, that'd be the biggest weight gain since fucking Tyson Fury. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought he's, I thought he meant Katie Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear, dear. Uh, Dominic has nominated uh, Brian Arman Graham of The Guardian US for calling AJ charismatic, handsome and humble in his latest piece. Just shows how effective Sky and Matchroom have been. Sounds like something Dr. Joseph Ajayo would come off with, wouldn't he? Mm. Um, Latchkey Kid has nominated Floyd. I love the country of Tokyo. <laughs> what a legend! What a legend! The Mister Mister Full sentence there. He said, "I love the country of Tokyo." You know, at the end of the day, I've made smart investments. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, what happened? He just paid a four hundred thousand dollar fine for the Bitcoin fucking promotion. He was doing. <laughs> isn't he? Isn't he like a robot though? That's just triggered with like four or five key catchphrases. Oh. Just fucking blurts them out one after the other incoherently. You know, at the He's end fucking of the day, useless. It's, a, it's about making smart investments. <laughs> What is asshole? We just asked you who we thought win the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Floyd's class, isn't he, man? Oh god, he, he, <laughs> that's, that's up there where he's with double glazing windows, fucking out of it. <laughs> with no windows in the ad. <laughs> he's starting to appear nearly every week, though, isn't he, Floyd? On Bellu of the week, fair play to me. He's good value, like. Right, uh, let's move on. Rob Stirrup has nominated Lee Westcott. He's talking about Fury Wilder. Shit weighing. Showtime don't do it like matchroom boxing. That's for sure. Oh God, where do you even start? How, how do you, how do you know. do a weigh-in? I mean, like, <laughs> there's only like a couple of ways to do it. I, the razzmatazz of the scales, Donny. Yeah. Uh, the light and effect, not that sort of shit. Honestly, <laughs> fuck, man. It's if Eddie Hearn's in charge of weigh eh? He just fucking hosts the bastard thing. <laughs> Uh, Danny Robslowski has nominated uh, MTK Manchester for calling Derry Matthews a former world champion. Yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> hey, 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 Steve. I, I, like, I like the way the... Uh, what is that? I, I like the way that Marbella does the way... <laughs> <laughs> I, like I like the way little, they do everything, Donny. Like Great cred. I like a little gunfire. <laughs> 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 Get him off, get him off. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Come on, let's move on, move on. Mayday. Um, Chad Hogan has nominated Jevon. Um, two great matchups. Well, I don't oh, sorry, I don't know the context of this one, but anyway, let's nominate him, shall we? Joe has noted nominated Moe's Doorbell. This was quite interesting. Moe's Doorbell uh, applied to become an anti-doping officer with you, yeah, Chad. I've seen that. <laughs> the course took 22 minutes from start to finish, including seven assessments. They accepted Mo Doorbell as a name. I used a fake email address. Great work, UK anti-doping. That was a bizarre one, wasn't it, Andy? Uh, it's, that, is, that, is, that just shows you, by the way. I mean, again, it's, it's government runners, isn't it? You know, but gov- I mean, Chris, I'm talking about nationalising the railways again. Fucking hell. I mean, there's fucking train accidents never before. If you leave the government to sort it out. Jesus Christ. Tyson Huey are obviously innocent if this if this is the, the people the crowd who are doing the testing anyway. 
Um, <laughs> Dean Glover has nominated Freddie Roach. Um, Tyson's going to win by knockout, says Roach. Tyson punches very hard. Clarissa right. Shields. Oh, I'll tell you what, Clarissa Shields has been on great form this week. This is the first oh. one from Eris Landy Lara. Clarissa says, my resume, my skills, my accomplishments are on the exact same level as Vassal Lomachenko. I'm just in the women's division. I have three of the belts at 160 in seven fights. I've fought nothing but world champs and beaten them. I'm going to be undisputed next year. I'm the middleweight. No, I'm the M- I'm the MF, the motherfucking Groat. <laughs> the the Groat. The, the, gro- <laughs> the greatest oh, yeah. of all time. Fuck off. And you know what? She, that could all be true and still nobody would care. Yeah, She's the Groat, Rob. She's the Groat. <laughs> then nobody would care. She could but, be fucking. She could be the second. Co- she could be like two Lomachenkos, and nobody would give a shit because it's women's but, but she's she's Sorry, but my sister's nothing within punching distance to me. By the way, and she even she would, would agree with me about say is women's boxing shit. It's no good to date for talent, and it's no good to fucking fighters. It is boring to watch. Well, it, really, it really is awful, and it, you can't cry sexism here because I I really enjoy watching women's MMA. Uh, the, the competition is better. The fights are better. The women's it's boxing is a huge thing. You can't watch it. The, the level of competition is nowhere close. Flores is like a legitimately good fighter. She should be fighting in the in the men's division. Let's see see if, how that goes now. If that is true, and she she is the female version of Lamachenko, I want to see the female version of Salido hand her her first loss. <laughs> I want that could be Savannah ever- Marshall. Aye, but hang on, so Salido wouldn't be able to punch on the bollocks. The Falcon punch. <laughs> oh, the Falcon punch, oh, there we go. I, th- I might like to see, like, like, uh, like Clarissa Shields versus Inouye, right? So she's gi- he- he's giving away, like, 50 pounds. But, he'd, rattle, you know. he'd rattle G-Sport, eh? <laughs> 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 <Fuck that>. <laughs> 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 Take... Technical knock orgasm. Christ, <laughs> 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 oh, I can't be on bluffing me and joke. Fucking hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Groat. Oh, God. <laughs> Rob, I'm going to store you as the Groat, oh. the greatest rapper of all time. What about that? Well, the gold X step phrase came from hip hop. That's an LL Cool J phrase. He called himself the Goat, greatest of all time. So, uh, the bar. Borrowing from hip hop, but uh, Chris has another one coming up. Sure, I'm Steve. Oh, she, <laughs> does. Steve. she does, she does, she does. Don't worry about that. We're getting there, we're getting there, right? Um, Sam, our friend over at Against the Ropes, has nominated Gareth in Blythe. Mm-hmm. Amazing how generous some media coverage of Tyson Fury is. The man's a proven jugs cheat, says Gareth, yet he gets generous coverage as if none of that matters when compared to the constant scrutiny of clean athletes like Chris Froome or Bradley Wiggins. It's hard to explain says Gareth in Blythe, at People of the UK is his Twitter handle. Uh, John Evans, uh, People of the UK, Donny. Um, no, who the fuck were those guys that he said were under guns? Cyclists. Oh, cyclists? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. No problem. Uh, John Evans, yeah, he nominated Lee Westcott. Presenting the champs of old was embarrassing. No face-off for the main event. All a little awkward. Where do you even start with this one, Andy? This is the belly of the decade for Lee Westcott, nominated by John Evans, we were referring to earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it's disgraceful, mate. As I say, it's, you know, I think I even mentioned to John, actually, uh, hopefully that guy doesn't go back and watch any of the fights for the 50s and 60s and watch some of the legends get into the ring, like, like Joe Lewis, for example, and shake hands with, like, say, I don't know, the heavyweights were at that time, maybe like Rocky Marciano, for example, and, like, shake hands with all, all the best guys, all that sort of stuff, and that. Ray Robinson done it, fucking Willie Pep, fucking Sammy Sadler. I could go on forever, man. Fucking the greats. This, this is how it was done back in the day. I mean, there was, there was that fucking, that, that last uh, card, um, a, a sky. I remember Tommy Hearns was sitting ringside and they put on some fucking shit. I can't remember what it was, but they couldn't, pre- they couldn't even present Tommy Hearns to the audience. Mind you, they were full of casuals. I wouldn't even know who Tommy Hearns fucking was, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um... What have we got then? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Women's Music has nominated David Hamilton. We're getting into the ones from the weekend now. AJ battered Klitschko, says David Hamilton. Fury showed last night he's got no chin. <laughs> All this talk about being slick and fast. <laughs> when AJ lands, he definitely won't get up. Wilder proof to everyone he's not box for shit. AJ can box and will power through them both. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. Listen, how many times Fury's been on the deck? What, four times? He got dropped off Cunningham. Who else he got, he got dropped off? Was it Hegovitz or what? No, it was a guy. Uh, oh, uh, Nevin, it was Nevin Pikic. Nevin Pikic. 
Devin Pikic, he got dropped twice there last year. That's four times in his career and he's fucking chinny. Ricky Burns has been on the fucking ground a few times, maybe about five or six, maybe more times. Did anybody say he's fucking chinny? But last night, like, Andy, he says that last night proves that Fury has no chin. <laughs> No chin, yeah. That's no what chin. he said. Last no. night proves you he has no chin. No chin. chin, he's not getting out of the fucking second. Like, no, you no know fucking I mean? chin. Listen, if he, if, if Fury had no fucking chin, by the way, right? I mean, Christ's sake, he'd be fucking like breaking jaws and shagging maws there last night, Dante Wilder, man. He fucking always ripped fucking Fury's jaw off him with fucking two shots. And what happens? He gets <laughs> fucking up off his arse, man. And says, right, let's fucking go to war now. And he fucking takes it to him. Fuck off. <laughs> What must he think about Stavern's chin or like <laughs> Spilka's chin? Like all these guys have gotten iced by Wilder. Only guys... Harrison. Poor oh. one, Ozzy. <laughs> Those two shots that uh, Wilder landed on Fury in the 12 were bigger than what he landed on Lewis Ortiz and Ortiz went down like a sack of... Ah, uh, you've been doing like an instalment, man. Didn't get up. So how the fuck can he say that? He doesn't have a... Last night proved he doesn't have a chin. It's the complete opposite, you fucking idiot. Yes, you moron. He's after knocking out 40 of the guys he faced. All right, it took him two fights to knock to burn out, but he still knocked out everybody else that he fought, you fucking idiot. Like, oh. David Hamilton, what's his Twitter? Let's have a look, shall we? At DTH22 David. So there you go, David I'm Hamilton. Gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to block him, by the way. That's fucking, that's age, man. You, you cannot tell me fucking Tyson Fury hasn't got what a chin. It? If he's not got a chin, man, he's got fucking some set of balls and a fucking heart bigger than a fucking my asshole, by the way. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's in the chat there, Ozzy. Put it in the chat. Oh, is it? Why, why did that prick have to be named David? I don't know. No relation to you, Dave, no? Surely not. <laughs> right, and Mohammed Mia was amongst many who sent the second Clarissa, Clarissa, whatever you call it, T-Rex Shields um, comment in. I'm disappointed with a heartbroken emoji. Ain't no way it was a draw. And all you're talking about, Fury won wide. Get out of here. You don't know boxing. Wilder won. Congrats, blonde bomber. Mistake. Did you see uh, Shakur Stevenson the equality? Yeah. He was like, Hi. sis, I love you and all, but you're fucking crazy. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like? I mean, this, this, is, this is the chick that actually fucking okayed fucking unk. You know, unk, who's Darrell's unk. <laughs> oh, fucking Leon. smashing fucking used to Katagi by a fucking bare fist. He was, yeah, he was, he was justified. He was justified, you fucking predator looking yeah. face. Oh, That's what it was, yes. wasn't it? Wasn't it Dave? Great nice. job, Uncle. Great job, Uncle. And nobody, <laughs> nobody watching boxing is trying to make an argument for Wilder winning. The argument is it might have been a draw. That's the most that people are pushing. You all don't know boxing, and, Rob. That's what you all don't, don't know, know boxing. Don't know shit about boxing. Get Roger on the case. She's a fucking racist. She's the quote. She's the she quote. Has a racist, she has a racist. She's the quote. She's the quote. Right, anyway, let's move on. Uh, Ronan Dyke. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. He said, the rematch won't be in the UK because Frank Warren can't put on a big show. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I, I replied to that. Uh, Windsor Park, maybe. Windsor Park, yeah, just a few months back. Outside of Wembley, Frank has put on the two biggest events in terms of attendances this year, Ellen Road and Windsor Park. Well said. Bab Babs has nominated Ronan Dyke for that one. Terry Woodfine has nominated Carl Rimmer. Wildy and Fury. <laughs> well, Wilder and Fury are both one-dimensional. Wilder, <laughs> Wilder just swings and Fury taps and holds. Can't finish anybody with a decent chin. So Fu Fury is one-dimensional. <laughs> it's Carl Rimmer. Oh, Christ almighty. More like Ass Rimmer. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, aptly named. <laughs> That's brutal. That's Eddie brutal. Rimmer. <laughs> the, only, the only Rimmer, yeah, the only Rimmer he's doing is AJ. <laughs> Oh man, alive! Oh, there's some good ones. There's some good ones this week. Anthony has nominated Matt Jolly as well. The guru was going on about Tyson Fury going into the backyards of Klitschko and Wilder. Matt Jolly jumped in. You could hardly call Klitschko a devastating puncher, says Matt. <laughs> 50, how many knockouts again? 50, 51 knockouts or what? <laughs> Fucking hell! Uh, I guess. Who uh... was that Ray Austin knockout man? Fucking Ray Austin! Fucking thought he was back in Texas. <laughs> Did, did Bacoli losing? Did Bacoli losing break something in that man? Oh. Hey, Nelson. Yeah. What's he got to do with anything, Dave? Bac no, Bacoli. Oh. <laughs> what? I'm talking I about he was Who? Isn't he the one who was uh, begging him up? 
Who, Billy Nelson? Yeah. Ah, he's still his trainer. Yeah. Well, not dispute he's saying, did, but as uh, Martin McCauley getting beat, like, turned something in Billy Nelson's head to think that... Yeah, that's what I said. Did it, uh, did it break something there? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Like... Right. Yeah, just... I, I know what you mean, Dave. Don't worry about it. Sorry, Dave. Oh, uh, you hit me, you hit me with a punch. Know. You hit me with a punch from left field. I'm not too good in the chin department there. I see what you mean now, Dave. Sorry. Apologies. I'm going to take AJ down the same way. Oh, you you do that then. Um, Chad Hogan is nominated. JS Native. Um, Kieran Nelson has nominated Chris. This fight just proves that Anthony Joshua will whoop Wilder's ass. David Nunn has nominated Chris Broussard. He's got a blue tick, so he must be important. Fury gave away the first few rounds because he wasn't busy enough. Wilder won the first few rounds, surely, on being the aggressor. Fuck off. Right. Thanks for that, Chris. Um, Emily Pandalakis, friend of the pod, noticed that they spelt Pacquiao wrong on the canvas. They were advertising the Manny yeah, Pacquiao ancient Brona pay-per-view and they spelt Pacquiao wrong, the clones. That was fucking brilliant. That was a good one. Matty DiGielanardo, former host of this pod, scored it a draw. Hatem Caduce jumped in. Bell end of the week right here. This is my nomination. What was it you said, Dave? Typical Matty, addicted to controversy. <laughs> he had it a draw just like he had Bradley Pacquiao won yeah. a draw. <laughs> that, I mean, Brian King had that a fucking draw as well. That fucking, I, f- I remember speaking to him about that. I used to, he, he must have been trolling with that card, man. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for months as host, Maddie would be like, we would get guests and callers on, and Maddie would tell everybody, even if it was totally unrelated, he would try to get back up for that position. <laughs> Nomination for him, Jordan Downing. We're getting towards the end of them now. Was nominated Ricky Potter, uh, saying that. Uh, AJ would take Fury or Deontay Wilder's head off within three rounds. Nameless and Shameless has nominated Brandon Honecker again, saying that Vlad, not taking anything away from Fury because Vlad was good, but I wouldn't call him a devastating puncher, just a very high-class boxer. Uh, the Guru, Fury's fame after this could eclipse Joshua's, not even joking when I say this. Harvey Specter has nominated The Guru. Nomination for The Guru for saying that Fury's fame could eclipse Joshua's. Chad Hogan has nominated Tariq Nasheed. Tariq was uh, having real trouble getting to grips with the scoring system last night. Uh, Sean Glover has nominated Sean Grogan, who went to the boxing banter page on Facebook and said, if Fury can't even beat Josh, uh, Joseph Parker, how's he ever going to get near Wilder? <laughs> he has no chance. He just aids, by the way. I've seen that Facebook page. By the way, can I just say something about uh, Fury eclipsing Joshua? If the latest article was fucking true that he has donated his entire purse to the homeless then Femi's going to have to step up to the mark here, by the way. I mean, this guy was the one that rejected $50 million so he could actually bring the fight to the to the UK, and still didn't get the fucking fight. So, there you go. There you that's go. amazing. If, if that's true, that's truly if amazing. That, if that is true, man, that is some fucking effort. Like, that is, that is uh, fucking applaud. But people would just rather kind of stick to the kind of homophobic comments and stuff like that, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, he'll probably lose from Sports Personality of the Year again. Oh, sure, you don't want to win that anyway. Right, uh, Shakur Stevenson, yeah, was replying to uh, Clarissa. He said, you are blind, love you to death, sis, but no way in hell. And Matrix9010 jumped in. But meanwhile, I don't see anyone discussing that long count by the ref. It should not have gone to the judges. However, it did go 12, and I had Fury winning. Uh, The Texas Tornado jumped in. That's Gabe. Lols, another mong, says Gabe, getting stuck in there on the Matrix. I think that's all the ones I have. Sam threw one in as well. Sharky, AFC Sharky said, I think the Wilder versus Fury rematch should be on the KSI versus Logan Paul undercard. That oh, would be he so, turned up. Did that you would see be that? so sick. <laughs> did, you, did you see that prick turn up last night by his WBC, WBC belt on? Did, did, did he walk in with little Cortez with a belt on? KSI, Jesus Christ. Fuck me. <laughs> KSI. KSI. I've got a cracker as well. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, I've got one. Uh, Gary, uh, Gareth A. Davis. Um, you just know after fucking uh, Deontay Wilder fucking basically was in, in his grill that the first thing he did when that interview ended was go for a fucking department store looking for a fresh set of pants. Uh, he fucking... You know, did you see it? Fucking Gareth A. Davis and that with fucking Deontay Wilder. Holy Gareth, fuck. Gareth is a hard man. Do you remember yeah, his fucking call for? He would have got, got jumped in on Wilder. No problem. <laughs> uh, I've seen that. I've seen that. Uh, who was the other one actually? I had one other one. Uh, oh, it's been right out of my head. Well, probably Eddie heard on that for saying that the fight wasn't going to happen still, you know, so we're still waiting for that. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's another one that's just not coming to me. Did we get, did we get Barry in there for his... Oh, oh I, th- go on. Barry, Barry, Barry. Barry for confirming the $50 million, uh, $50 million offer was real. I've had twats he tweeting me all night that he, 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 was, he was at the banter. I like to know how they fucking know he was at the banner. Do, do they actually know his email address? Do they, is he got this information? 
But when all parties say that the fifty million dollar offer was actually legit, and Eddie Hearn moved the goalposts, they never had any intention of making that fucking fight. He had to be so quick in as well. And you know what? It's after coming back. I was the smile on Luda Bella's face, the smile on Shelly Finkel's face, the smiles on the Fury camp. They were involved in a classic heavyweight fight. All right, you had your classic with Klitsch. Go. It was a good fight. But the big fight is out there to be made. You can make this fight with either of the two of them in April if you want the center. It's easy to make if you want to make it, but you won't make you won't make it. And I tell you what, Fury's going to turn into a hero. He could run down the streets of London tomorrow. He'd be like Rocky. Everybody be running behind him. He's the people's champion now, like. And it's all after coming back. And AJ better step up to the plate and fight one of these two guys in 2019, or else he's not a credible world champion in my eyes. Like, if he wants to make the fight, make the fucking fight. Like, it's not that hard to do. There's that much money on the table. That fight could be easily made. Like. And fuck your A side too. Any of those two is 50, worth 50 50 in this fight now after that performance. Well said. Haven't you got a belly of the week to throw in, Rob? Oh, yeah. I got a cracker. I don't normally go with the casuals, like, but a, a London rapper, Cass is Dead, really talented, talented guy, tweeted out a picture or put on Instagram a picture of Tyson Fury and he said he outboxed him, he outclassed him, he got knocked down twice and he still got up like it was nothing. We all know who won. Gypsy King is the best in the world, right? No problem with that. King Majala jumps in and says, uh, well, I don't know about that, Cass is dead. Uh, a knockdown is worth seven points. A knockdown is worth a clear seven points. <laughs> so, so I tweeted him and said, a knockdown, or I, I responded, I was like, a knockdown is a clear seven points. Watch another sport. So then Cass is dead chimed in and he was like, LOL, man deleted it. So he's like, I may be wrong then. What is it? And your man's like, if you don't know what he's so fast to say for. And he was like, uh, I thought I read that it was meant seven points each. And uh, he was like, uh, Cass's dad said to him, just stop, go comment on anime. Uh, so that was pretty good. Like, uh, a knockdown is worth a clear seven points. So if you're thinking of those 14 points that the, Deontay Wilder clearly accumulated in the fight, the scores can't be that off. Like, what a fuck off. Like, don't watch the sport. Like, that's like me, me watching cricket or something and then trying to chime in on wickets and all. And I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, exactly. you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Like, I, only not... boxing brings him out. Like, I'm not like, up MMA. I mean, I watched some, I watched some clips that was uh, Israel Adesanya. I think his name was. I, I'm an absolute casual come to MMA, right? But I watched some footage of this guy, and I, I can I can tell just by watching this guy that he is a fucking bad dude, right? David Hare could be a ninja, far better, right? He's a fucking ninja. And you're fucking right about that. As I say, and I know nothing about him in MMA. But I watched that, but I'm not going to comment. I'm yeah, not, exactly. I'm not going to go about go my road try to educate somebody about how good he is. Bob, are you in a hot air balloon? No, I'm just, uh, I'm out on my patrols, as you know. But uh, I wanted to give a retrospective one as well to baby bro, AB, Mr. Shut That Soft Ass Shit Up, um, because <laughs> we forgot saying, about him then? last week. Well, last week we forgot about it. He actually said in the, in the build-up, it's not funny. <laughs> He's hacking up fight. He said, man, he's back with Freddie now. How do you think about that? And he said, oh, shit, I'm happy. Happy man, he's back with Freddie. And Jim Gray goes, and why is that, Adrian? And he went, so we can get this thing shaking. <laughs> and Jim, Jim, Jim Gray just threw him a look like, what is wrong with you? Like, we, we just, you just have to get in a Pacquiao fight. Like, and this is what you're saying? Like, shut up for your own this for yourself. Like, but uh, yeah, and one for George Foreman for last night, because George, as great a fighter as he was, punditry is definitely not his thing. He said, stop saying Fury won. Stop trying to indoctrinate us. <laughs> um, on his Twitter time, page, time, wasn't it? George, George Foreman, uh, yeah. George Foreman, Carl Froch esque with his punditry, uh, and I had another one, but I can't think of it now. Don't do it, son. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be yeah, all was, right. Remember, George, uh, 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 jo Jones Montel Griffin was a prime example where he just rooted for the other guy, just like seemingly out of spite, <laughs> and uh, Jones was beating Montel Griffin around the ring in the in the rematch in the first round, and he was like. Roy, better watch out. Jones just executed him. Like, yeah, George, George, Foreman, George Foreman had a will to win in that fight last night, yet Lennox Lewis says he was exposed. So, I mean, people oh. are at a fucking place with this. While we're at it, really bold, didn't really bold try to confront somebody, didn't try to confront Lennox Lewis or, one, or Holyfield or something at the press oh, the other day. So yeah, they were all there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember which one. I think it was, I think it was Lennox Lewis. And then... Um, he said, he said uh, in the interview that AJ would beat Wilder and Fiori on the same night. Um, so, better of the week for Riddick. What's he uh, confronting, Lewis, about 25 years too late? I don't know. Like, yeah, he's saying that maybe he's, stop, stop telling people I ducked you or something like that. Something along those lines. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, so that was my last one. Right, thank Speaking you. Any then. other nominations, gentlemen? Ozzy, maybe? 
No, all, all mine have. There's that many. All mine have, uh, are in the running anyway. Oh, there's some crackers this week. Um, anybody else quickly throw any in before we wrap up? I can't. I can't that... remember all more. I can't remember who's who, who. Who they all were. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. Oh, I know. How about uh, how about Pacquiao Browner being a pay per view fight, which I learned last night. <laughs> like I can't believe you'll pay for believe... it. Huh? You'll pay for it, don't I? I'm, I mean, if it was in the movie theater, maybe I might go. But uh... <laughs> he's got a buy ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Hole in the bottom of the popcorn. We know what you're about, don't I? Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 Let's move on, right? Okay, uh, Dave, you first. Who are you going for? Um, I just want to throw in. It's another casual, but she is a, a fairly big sports personality. Jamel Hill, uh, kind of a unnecessarily controversial person, attended my first fight. Wilder v Fury was amazing, but sorry, thought Wilder won. Boxing, unfortunately, is comfortable letting fights be decided like this. <laughs> Going to be amazing fodder going forward. It's just this casual bitch. Like she, <laughs> she openly says. I attended my first fight, and then like, and then I like, tries to tries to uh, proliferate like she like she understands it so well. Um, also, I found a little. I, 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 this isn't a value of the week winner, but do you wonder if it was a little awkward with Freddie Roach and Ricky Hatton in the corner? Because you know, last time last time I saw them in an arena together, uh, <laughs> Ricky was laying on the ground for two minutes, ice cold. And uh, <laughs> ha- has probably got no recollection of that, probably. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky could do with a belly with a week himself, man. You want to see as I feel before that? I never heard a more self indulgent interview since the last Car Foch interview. He basically brought every point back to the when he fought Mayweather in um in Vegas and said that he brought 40,000 fans with him. So every question was like, he was like, How do you think Tyson is going to do on Saturday night under the lights? Well. When I fought Floyd Mayweather, um, he, was uh, like, what? So he just thought he was on that buzz for the whole interview. Like it was, it was hard to watch. Like, but I watched like it. <laughs> Who's he going to be then, Dave? Uh, I'll vote for Clarissa Shields. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'll... I don't hate the woman, but she says some stupid shit regularly. She she's deserves the it. She's the quote. I'm going for her as well. For She's put in two really strong defenses, Donny, I think, you know, with the Lomachenko comments and then the Deontay Wilder comments. I think she's really put up a good, a good account of herself this week. What do you think, Don? I like the guy that said nobody does a weigh in like it here. <laughs> I think that was Lee Westcott. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's some that's some good shit. I mean that's uh that's like saying like nobody nobody flushes a toilet like you know, like me. So you know, I mean like there's it's it's a job, you know, there's one way to do it and uh you know, I yeah, I just I I thought that one was good. The the, the degree of like ass lickery that 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 comment really entailed is uh i think puts them over the top for the botw no nobody does boxing in italy like eddie hern andy who are you going for <laughs> uh i like the floyd comment actually about tokyo being the best country <laughs> ever fucking invest- i mean i just i can't you know, i'm not actually like the americans but the americans have always been shit at geography haven't they always have been so i'm gonna go for floyd gabe uh, what about you i know that alabama's on your hit list uh geographical <laughs> Any ge- geographical offences from Floyd getting your nomination? I, I did enjoy that one, and I have to go with, with you know in agreement with Andy. Uh, you know they do a they do a they used to do a segment on a late night show here, and they would have uh, uh, the guy Jay Leno would ask random questions to people on the street, and he would ask them where is like a specific capital. And you would get some of the most fucked up answers. And then they asked them, you know, where's the where's the um, capital of the United States? And they would say, like, fucking New York or something completely <laughs> out of base. So he's dead on straight right about that. Uh, but despite me wanting to go with that one really bad, I got to go with Clarissa Shield. She's just a big, huge, dumb fucking idiot. What's what? the capital of Texas, Gabe? Austin. Austin, okay. Uh, Aussie, um... What what are you going for? Oh, I'm torn between two. Uh, Clarissa Shields and uh, comparisons to Vasyl Lomachenko. And that guy uh, who John Evans nominated about the weigh-in and rolling out all, you know, like, what did he describe mobs? Has-beens or something like that. (laughs) But I want to split my vote between those two. Shields is a fucking idiot, and uh, as is that guy as well. Yep, well said. It's been a strong week, to be honest. Ben North was in touch earlier on Twitter. He said, I suppose there's only one winner, but I don't know who he's actually referring to, Rob. 
Let's have a look on Twitter. Um, a certain Mexican, he says. Oh, I don't even know who he's going for. Uh, oh, yeah, Mr. Roshin, I suppose that's... Yeah, and if we haven't even mentioned him, Rob, uh, I suppose it goes without saying. Alejandro Roshin, we'll throw him in posthumously. Who are you going for? Yeah, um, it's kind of hard to go against. Uh, Barry Hearn is a very strong contender, I think, for jumping on that straight away, like a little smammy getting in, revealing that they actually did have a 50 billion offer, but they were scared of the judges. We were right not to take the fight because we were scared of the judges. So, so you're going to fight the winner of Dillian White and Barry Chisora in April when you could make this wilder fight or you could make this Fury fight. Like, so he's a prick for that. Like, but, um, yeah, Clarissa for two. Like, she had two belters this week, like the Gwote and the female Lamachenko. The female Lamachenko, Gwote, and Wilder Clare winner. Like, so hard to go against Clarissa. Like, so maybe people will care about her momentarily. I I can't remember who made the comment, but someone put a, a wise crack on Twitter and it's something about if Clarissa and Spencer Fearon got together or something, they'd make some Malcolm X energy or something. I can't remember what it was. But Black, it was Panther, <laughs> so, Black Panther superhero or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I tell you, it's quite obvious. In the, like, I think more in the UK, I could see both sides kind of uniting that Fury is the clear winner. But in the States, it definitely seems to be more divisive. Like it's... Um, you see people yeah. on both sides like we're just making their mind up before the fight's over like which is yeah it's it's mad you know, to think watch, I, uh, yeah. we don't watch boxing like that like, no i was just gonna say it's mad to th- I, I i honestly say i don't even that doesn't even enter my head like you know i think that's bullshit yeah, but exactly. that's the way it is that's the way it is right okay congratulations chris shields i think my by my tabulation as jim lampley would say has made chris shields the winner she's the quote of the value of the week congratulations it was only a matter of time to be honest before clarissa did it Thank you, everybody who's been on tonight. I don't think there's any other business. Uh, yeah, it's 10 to 11. We've fairly put in a shift tonight, but everybody seems to have enjoyed it. Thanks to Rob Kelly for jumping on with us. Thanks to Ozzy, to Gabe, Andy Patterson, Donny, hey to Dave Loback. We had Bryn Jonathan Butler at the top of the show as well. Liam Taylor, welterweight professional. Tommy Allen, Adam Smith. don't know if there's anybody else, but if there is, thank you for your contribution. Go to patreon.com forward slash boxing asylum. We've got a Sugar Ray Robinson, Randy Turpin, punches from the past, drop in within the next week or so, so you might enjoy listening to that. Thank you for listening to The Asylum, not live. I've been Steve Wellings. We'll catch you all again, same time, same place next week. Bye.